All right, we have Matthew Cox back in. Thank you for coming in. Is this it? We're starting? This yeah. Is, okay, go ahead. Is that good? I should have never given you one of them. That was the biggest mistake of my life. I'm a coffee not... and a rock star. And it's only 20 calories? <laughs> and it's got it's two... probably 100, but you burn 80 of it just drinking it. And it's oh, got 200 something. milligrams of caffeine. Does it? Yeah. How much does a cup of coffee have? 60. <laughs> Fucking pussy. I, <laughs> I, just, I, I forgot. I forgot who I'm dealing with. This, this, this was probably a massively bad mistake to give you a rock star. I should have kept you with the, the 120 milligram I'm ready uh, to monster. go. I mean, you we are going. We're going. We're going. You, mean, you think I do my 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 paintings fast now. Imagine if I had a couple of these. Then I'd be like, you know, people people are like, look how fast you're going. I'm like, well, it's a time lapse. And they, they don't, you know. So then if, you, if, I, so if I give you a rock star, it won't be 900 for a biggie? No, no, it's still it's still eight or nine hundred. I'm gonna do a um. Oh, I told you I was gonna do a, a Tupac. Yeah, yeah. D did you start to change it? Like to I make drew it, it out. Yeah, I, I no, I out. just saw that original one that you had. Oh, I drew it out already. I got two four foot by three foot. They're drawn out. They're on the wall. I just haven't had a chance to paint them yet because I was doing these screen prints. But now I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that this week. What's your What's been your biggest seller with uh, the paintings? I sold a. I've sold a lot of Marilyn Monroe's and Jokers. I sold a Joker for like twenty two hundred bucks. Wow! Yeah, really. But on average, I sell these things for because if I do two or three at the same at the time at a blah, 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 I, if I do two or three at the same time, I can minimize my cost. You know, because it's like if you said, "Hey, can you do a painting of me?" Well, yeah, I can for fifteen, sixteen hundred bucks. But if it's a painting that I can sell to multiple people, then I can drop it down to like 800 bucks and I can do three of them. So now I can, it's about, I get to make about the same amount of money for the same amount of time, but it's something that apply, I can sell to three different people as opposed to, because people are like, oh, I don't understand, bro. You, you charged 800 for this. Why can't you do one for me for 800 of a self port or of a portrait? I'm like, cause I did two of those. I'm doing one of you for just you. So in other words, it's kind of like a limited edition, right? So like when you just do one, it's limited edition, so it's going to be more. Well, I mean, if I need to make, let's say I'm going to spend four or five days on a painting, but let's say I paint two in the same time. People don't, you don't understand. So if I paint one painting and it takes me, let's say three days, well, to paint an extra one, it only takes another day. Now, why is it so much quicker? Because, because I'm already, I've already mixed the colors. I've already drawn it out. I've already, you know, you know for, if I, if I do like when I did the biggie sketch, on um uh on uh uh what is it uh, photoshop okay well that's that's an an hour or so just looking through biggie pictures and then i got to find a fat guy that's holding an ak47 so okay i got to find then i have to put that one on top of biggie's face then i have to blend it together then i have to get the you don't know, have to do all this so if that's an hour, let's say it's 2 hours 2 or 3 hours just there of putting together that then I have to print it out. Then I have to print out a piece of laminate. Then I have to project it. Then I have to draw it out on the painting. If I'm already got it, done all that. I, drawing a second one is no more time. It takes me another 10 minutes to draw a second one. So, but if you said, no, no, you got to do two completely different paintings, then I have to start that whole process over again. Mm -hmm. Plus, if I'm already painting, if I'm already out there painting, and I got to paint, start painting this black blob in here and this purple blob in and this green one. Then for me to st take two steps over and do it again doesn't take me any that much more time. So the extra painting only takes about 50% of the time. If I can do three, then it drops down to like a third of the time. I see. So I would I like to get, I'm going to move my, when I move, I'm going to move my Lisa up. I'm going go to go get a bigger place. I'll have a bigger studio. So instead of, be do instead of me doing two paintings at a time, I'll set it up so I can knock out three at a time. Now, I know nothing about this. So is there a way to make the process quicker? Like if you had I mean, a, a it, different place, you know, I, you still got to do it by hand, each one of them. Well, I mean, I can do screen prints and that helps because I still have to do artwork. Like you could do just a screen print, which is, it's like a silk screening for your t-shirt, right? But that's like almost like a print. It's not a print, but it's almost like a print. So, because it's a screening. So everyone's a little bit different. Um well, what I do is I do a modified screen print. So I'll do the screen print, then I'll paint into it, like over parts of it, then I'll screen over it again, and then I'll paint a wallpaper on the side of it, and then 
I'll put draw a white line around it, sign my name in there. It's an original. Every single one of them is different. So it's an ori- every one of them is an original piece of artwork. So I guess my question, I, I asked that wrong. So could you make one painting by hand and then screen 10 of them and say, can, look, this is an original, you know, signed, blah, blah, blah. And here's yeah, uh, yeah. a Those print. Are prints. Those and are then prints. you would just put it on a canvas. Right. So what you do is you just have an original one, then you photograph it really high resolution uh, photograph and then you there are companies that will make prints and they'll print print them on demand over and over and over again did, but those aren't original pieces of artwork did you ever think of having an original and that I, I've thought about doing that but, I, and I may do that at some point yeah go to um, tab 2 pull that up so you might do it I mean uh, I, I probably will do that at some point the problem is you know I don't have the, because, like, you know, like, so you did that Biggie one, right? So everybody's going to want the Biggie one. Everybody's going to want the Tupac one. So, yeah, like, if you want the original, we'll just call it limited edition. This is the second one there. No, okay. it's, it's uh, over. On go o- you oh, go I'm over. Sorry. If you go over, you can see the video. Click uh, the one all the way to the left. Right. If you click on that, that's a that's the time lapse. That's the video. That's, yeah, of, of you doing it. Right. Yeah, keep this on here while he does it, and I'll talk. So you could, so that would be the original or limited edition, and then if you wanted to, you could uh, screen print it, right? Right. So I could take one of those, photograph it, and make a, a a print of it, and then you could just buy the prints. They put it on canvas. The problem is all the prints that I've seen people do. They first of all, I use gallery cut canvases, so I use a really good grade of canvas, a good frame. Like the frames are like an inch and three quarters um, thick. Well. When they do prints, they're on this little half inch. Like they're, they're crap. They're not stretched tight. They don't look good. And it's it's basically a, a picture. It's a print. Now, how long did that take you to do right there? About, now, th- about that one? Yeah. About, about three to four days. It's okay. okay. Yeah, I got about four days in it. And how, how many have you sold of? Um... I sold two of those. And then I have, and I have a guy that wants another one. So I'm going to do two more. And then I'll just repost the video and I'll sell them again. Now, can you buy um, like a screen printer, like a good one, so it doesn't come out shit? I've seen those screen prints, like you're saying, on a canvas, and it's not like clear. It, it, Am I right? Like, or uh, well, did I print- just get a total piece of shit? No, it's a, it's a, it, they, they're, they always seem kind of semi-fuzzy, and they're not, and part of that is probably partially the photograph, and it's partially the printer, and you're basically... It's basically like, um, it's a copy. It's a copy machine. It's a copy on canvas. It doesn't come out that great. It looks great from 10 feet away, but you get up on it and you realize, okay, well, this is just a copy. <laughs> so that, that, you know, so it doesn't, they don't look good. I, I don't like them. I don't like, it's not, to me, it's not, that's not a piece of artwork. Yeah. Oh, it's a print. It, look, it, look, it, look, look at my. Okay, well, that's not art. See, you're so artistic, right? So I, I, you know, I mean, you really right. are. And obviously, you're really good. And you know, I hate to blow your head up any more than it's already blown up, especially after Amsterdam and everything else. Can I have another one of these? No. On, on your way home, on your way to uh, Vitaly, yeah. we'll get to. Um, but I can't see you doing the prints. May, maybe at some point because you're you're very uh, authentic. You know what I mean? I I just don't. I just think if you're buying a piece of artwork, you should buy a piece of artwork. Right. You know, if you want a photograph, well, then get yourself a photograph. <laughs> yeah. I told you, I was at uh, Victor Concepcion. He had a Victoria's Secret, like, event. And uh, it was called WWE. Anyway, there was a guy there with paintings that were as good as yours, and yours might even be better. And he had Tom Brady. He had Jordan. 20000 yeah. 30000 like that biggie. Now he's got he's been doing it for a long time, right? So he's got reputation, right. blah, 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 blah. But he had a biggie. And I went up and I asked we well, had a biggie and a Tupac. And I right. asked him for the Tupac, thirty five thousand. Well, here's the thing about And that. it wasn't even that big. Well here the thing about that is that like they can wait. Like I got I've got um I had a gallery owner contact me from like Chicago or something and he was like, Look, if you send them to me, then I can get you between thirty five hundred to seventy five hundred dollars i was like well how quickly and he was like oh well it's probably going to sit there for it's probably going to take three to six months but i'll get you the money three to six months bro like i I don't i don't have three like 
you understand if I and I make these, I gotta sell them. Like I just got out of prison. I don't have a bankroll where I can kick back and re- and relax on my my savings. Like I don't have money coming in. Like as soon as money comes in, it goes right back out. I would have said to him, "Well, fuck it. If you can sell it in three to six months, yeah. give me the cost." Yeah, right? give, give me give three me, grand now, and you can sell whatever you. And pay. then if it takes you a year, fuck it. I don't care. Yeah, they don't but do that. He wants you to front it to him, right? Yeah. So now you broke up with your girlfriend. So tell me how that that whole situation well, that, happened. That last time you were here, you were fucking glowing because you were back together right. this time. Right. Well, that makes it sound like when you say you broke up, or, it makes it sound like I I had a choice. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> it was this. It was it was a text that started with. So what was the text? The text was like. You're so amazing. You're such a great guy. I'm sorry. I've been giving this such a half-ass effort. And I'm reading it thinking, oh, great. She's realizing how fucking half-ass she's been. And she's going to she's gonna lean into it now and be like, you know, look, I'm sorry. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to do this. Because we haven't been seeing each other a lot in the last month or so. She's been just like, I'm tired. I know I was supposed to come over, but I'm tired. I'm just going to go to bed. It was just constantly something. It was like, well, you know, I know we're supposed to spend the weekend together, but... I'm going to hang out with my dad and I'm going to, it's like, what, what, what? Like, you, you know, you blew me off all week and now you're going to hang out with your dad over the weekend. I'll try and come over Sunday night. You tr- you're you going to try and, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what, what am, I, am I single? So she's like, hey, I'm sorry. I've been so, you know, screwed up and I haven't been doing this and doing that. And, uh, and I've been giving, a, been putting it, giving a whole half ass effort into the relationship. And I'm so sorry about that. And you're such an amazing guy. And I'm thinking, cool, this is going the right way and then then it is but it's just not working <laughs> and i was like no, huh? no 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 and i went she said i'm sorry i just can't do this anymore and i went are you breaking up with me on a text and and by the way i was actually dressed and ready to draw go and meet her for church oh that's so, that's great so like i got dressed for church where i'm going to meet her because we, we we always meet on sunday for church And I texted her and I was like, you know, hey, do you want me to pick you up or do you want to meet me there? And she was like, and then then she sent me the text. And I was like, I mean, if I hadn't text, was I going to end up, was I going to end up at the service alone? (laughs) I mean, and I went, are you breaking up with me on a text? And she goes, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, you know, I, I love you, but I just can't do this anymore. I went, she said, I just, I just, we just, I just can't see you anymore. I went, and I think my response was like, go fuck yourself. And so you saw the signs coming. You saw this coming. About a month Something ago. was not off, right? Right, but she has a tendency to, like, to me, if it was, if I was headed down that path and I started kind of pulling away, if the girl was like, "Is everything okay?" I would say, "It's not really okay." But she doesn't. She, she, she was doing the whole, "No, I love you. I'm just so tired." Like it was just excuse after excuse, and then you get to that point where it's like, "Listen, if it's important to you." You'd make this work. You know what I'm saying? You would do this. You do. And here's the thing. It's not like I'm saying, hey, come over. I'm saying, do you want me to come over? Like, I'll come over. I can pick up food. And I can come. And she, no, no, I'm just tired. It's like, okay, so no, it's not, it's not, I'm getting home late and I don't have time. It's, I don't want to see you. Like, okay, I'm saying, I'm not saying, hey, I'm going to come over. Like, okay, well, if you've eaten, that's fine. Like, do you want me to just come over and just stay the night? Like not have sex, but just sleep in the same bed, just be together, be around each other, and it and it's like no, I'm just tired. I'm just gonna go to bed. Whoa, okay. Um, this is this is off. This is off. Yeah, right? and that had been happening, and then of course the moment I started going, okay, forget it. You know, okay, and I stopped texting very much. Then it became. So then it turned into suddenly it's like, hey, what's going on? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then it suddenly be, she would come back strong. I, I want to come over tonight. I really want to see you. And it, OK, OK. And then it would then she'd come over and she'd come over for a night or two nights and then she'd fade off again. And now when you're reading that text, right, that she kind of ends it. Yeah. You're thinking like, holy shit, she finally sees like, you know, maybe I need to make a couple changes. Right, right. right. And then she, and she did. And then, yeah, she did make the change. Yeah. And then you realize that she's ending it, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, the last time she broke up, with, the last time you guys broke up, how did that one go compared to this time? Because this is like a ring around her fucking rosy. The next time you'll be oh, in here, is, you'll be back with her. You don't understand four or five. No, I don't. Is this round think, five? This is like five, six breakups. 
you know, I've been I've been with him for probably three of them, right? Yeah. You like you've come in right after. Oh, the, I come, the last I time in. he was here, he was fucking glowing. The guy was glowing when he walked in because he was back with us. Of course, because we what well, like because the, the time before this one we broke up, which was similar to this, and it was a similar. I was like, okay, and I just hung up and we're done. No, no, no. Actually, the last time it was she she had come over and I was like, all right, well, here's your food. You know, we had gone out to eat and I got the food and get this and boom. She's like, okay, do you want to talk about it? Talk about what? It's over. You just said it's over. Get your shit. Get out. Did you, did you leave anything in the house? You can get it and leave. And she was like, so she left. About three, four days later, the text started coming in. Mm. You know, the, I can't stop thinking about you. The, are you okay? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And then she's like, I miss you. And I'm like, well, are, are you, you don't sound very sure of your decision. She's like, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what to do. What do you think we should do? And it's like, well, I don't know. She's like, I really miss you. I'm like, well, if you want to come over, she's, do you think we should, I should. I'm like, I didn't break up with you. I thought we should be together. What are you doing? And then she came over. So then she starts coming over. Next thing you know, she's coming over two, three nights a week. I'm going over. Next thing you know, we're seeing each other more than we've ever seen each other. A month goes by. And one day she comes over and she's just like, I made a mistake. I messed up. I, I'd be a fool not to date you. She's so then we've been right. dating for three or four for four months, right? And about four months, four or five months since then. And then everything's great. And then we just broke up. And only this time, and this is going to sound extremely childish, by the way, Dan. And I don't want any judgments because this is something. When I was in prison, I would hear like when I was on prison, I would there was no there was FaceTime. Oh wait, no, um, Facebook had just come out. Like I'd never been on Facebook. Okay, there was MySpace when I went into prison. Yeah. So then, and, and Facebook had come out, but just come out. And I remember the girl I was dating was telling me, hey, do you want to get a Facebook page? And I was like, no, I'm wanted by the Secret Service and the FBI. I really probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> and she was like, okay. So she's like, I'm going to make one. I was like, okay. So, but then it became a big thing while I was in prison. People were talking about it all the time. And I'm watching TV programs and people are like upset because their girlfriend or the chick they dated suddenly changed their their um, relationship profile. And they're like, they'll call them up and say, did we just break up? Because you just changed your relationship profile. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, has that ever happened to you? Oops, sorry. Um... <laughs> uh, no, but th I do have one question for Matt. How old is this girl? 34. Oh, I thought she was like 18. Oh, okay, no, never she mind. was like, no. So... What happened is this time, the next day, she took her Facebook down. I thought, that's weird. Why would you take your Facebook? Like, I, I thought maybe she blocked me. And then the next day it came back up. But when it came back up, the relationship status was changed. So it was she was dating me. And now it's it doesn't say single. It just says nothing. But that might as well be the same fucking thing. It's she you're single. You just have no relationship status at all. And I was like. What? And I remember thinking, oh, wow, yeah, this is totally different. Because before, even when we were broken up for a month, she never changed it. And I thought, wow. And I remember thinking, do you know how much of a child you sound like right now thinking that that means something? And, and of course, I asked a, a couple of my the girls that I know that are friends. They're like, no, that does mean something because she's letting people know, hey, it's over. And before she didn't because she was never sure, this is saying she's sure. Now, did this one sting like the last one? Because the last one, you were a little bit stung. This one didn't sting nearly as bad as the last one. Because why, why do you think that Because is? there was a month or so where I knew something was wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and because every time she's done it, it feels like it's killed the relationship or that a little bit, every single time, it's killed it a little bit, a little bit. So now, even when we're back together and everything, even if we had a great day, it's like, oh, we had a great day, but the truth is, I'm not feeling 100% in love and, and just consumed because I'm waiting for the fucking other shoe to drop. Because every time you keep kicking the fucking chair out from underneath me. And, and the truth is, this chick's never been all in. You know, and, she, and you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know what I was fucking, what, what I was thinking because we, she's way younger than me and she's always been wishy washy. And it's like, look, if you're with somebody, then you're 100% all in. Like I'm a hundred percent all in. You don't you don't seem upset like you were last time because that no, one time really you came is. in, you were really fucked up. Oh yeah, up. I was really fucked up because I thought this is it. I was head over heels. Yeah. Listen, I 
Do you want to get back with her? Um, I mean, do I want to? I, I would want to get back with her if she was 100% all in, but she never will be. She's never going to be. It's always going to be half-assed. So if she came to you right now with the same thing she did last time, where she's I, like, oh, I, I miss you, blah, 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 I made a no, bad choice. I'd be like, do? oh, I, I'd, I'd do the whole, <laughs> you're going to have to fucking sell it, Slim. Like this whole, well, we, <laughs> have to we can keep, like, like, I mean, like, you're going to have to go fucking get you, pack all your shit up in boxes and fucking show up here and move in. Like, I'm going to need some master fucking gesture. And that's only because I'm not saying, if I'm in, if I see, if I'm seeing somebody else and she came back, I'd be like, no, I'm not cutting this other chick's throat because you came to your fucking senses. Fuck you. That's insane. Well, it is what it is. Women, right? What are you going to do? You can't <laughs> live without them. You can't live with them. Listen up. I still think the next time you come in, you'll be, you'll be back with her. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'll be dating some some other chick. You think she's bipolar? No. 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 She just can't really make up her mind? Mm, no, I just think she's not in love. Yeah. The, the truth is, deep down, she's just not in love. She tried. She wanted to make it work. She wanted to be in love with me. She wants to. But, I mean, her one of the times when she came back and we got back together, she, she said, I would be a fool not to – she is not to date you. Like, I would – that would be that'd be the dumbest thing I could. She's like, I mean, you're amazing. You're great to me. You're a great guy. She said, I would be a fool not to date you. Like, because someone's a catch isn't a reason to date them. You should date someone because you're in love with them, not because it's the right, it's the smart move necessarily. I'm not saying that's not always a choice because sometimes I can see some chick. That's got two kids hooking up with a guy that's got money that maybe she's not 100 percent in love with, but they have a relationship and they have an agreement and she's got two kids she can't take care of. I get it. I mean, I, I think I told you that where my mom one time I was we were driving through uh, Temple Terrace, which is where I grew up. And my mom said, I remember there was this woman, really attractive woman, probably in her late 30s. She had two, and she had two young kids. And I think we dropped off one of her kids, like we were taking her home, or him home, and we dropped them off, and my, well, I saw the mom. But the father was like fucking 30, 40 pounds overweight, balding, you know, a balding, fat, older guy, like probably in his 50s. And I was like, and I remember, I was a little kid, I don't know what I was, 11 or 12 or something, I forget, 10, and I went, Mom, I said, why is Mrs. Smith with Mr. Smith? And I said, she's... She's so pretty. And my mom said, well, you know, he's a good provider and she needs that. And being married isn't always about love. Sometimes it's a partnership. And she said, and Mrs. Smith has two children and her husband left her and he doesn't help uh, help support them. And she needs to be with someone that is a good provider. And she said, and that's their agreement. And and I'm a little kid, and I remember thinking, okay, that makes sense to me. And so sometimes that's the way it works. But the chick I'm dating, Jess and I, neither one of us have anything. I thought you guys were perfect because she was the complete opposite of you. That's what did, I thought. Did you ever see anything with uh, his his girl? She, she like can fix like a, a motor. Like build a motor, like like that. I mean, the absolute opposite of him. Oh yeah, I can't do anything, bro. I've never. I didn't even. I don't know anything about your girl. Yeah, except yeah. you're single now. Yeah. So, are you gonna send this to her? I'm just curious. Me? No. Can, can we tag never. her on Instagram on this? Maybe. No, she'll <laughs> never. No, she she would never. She would. First of all, she'd be furious. Um, I talked about the breakup on concrete, mm -hmm. and I sent it to her because we were texting. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and I was like. I was like, oh, boom, Check. hey, I was on concrete you know, two nights ago. Boom, and I sent it to her. She came back. She was furious. You fucking said this, and you said, I was like, what? What did I say? What? What? What are you going to do? You know, yeah, you can't, you know, like, I mean, you, your happiness is not my major concern anymore. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry to hear that, and again, sorry about your mom. You know. Sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sucks. That's fine. Fuck it. It's over with. What can you do? She's at peace. Yeah. So now, you, how did uh, you got invited to go to Amsterdam? We had talked about that a little bit on the last one, but you were like kind of tight-lipped about it. Yeah, because they were like, you know, like 
they were not sure, I think, who they were selling the show to at the time. And now it turns out it was it was sold. Well, it's on like four. It's gonna. So I did a. There's a doc. A six part. I found out more information. It's a six part documentary, on, called, um, called the psychology of a con artist. And they're one hour episodes, and they start in December. Now, now t- excuse me. Now, take it from the beginning. How? What? You get a call. I got a, an email saying. You know that there was a production company out of it was a German production company that works out of uh, Amsterdam, and they were doing a, a six-part series, one hour each episode called "The Psychology of a Con Man," and that they had seen several of my videos on YouTube, and they wanted to talk to me about participating in one of the um, one of the episodes. So we did a Zoom call. We did three or four different Zoom calls, but we did one, and they said, "Look, would you be interested?" And I was like, "What's it about?" Like, I really don't feel like being bashed, you know, American Greed style or Dateline style. I said, I, I, I've been bashed. I said, no, no, no. And they were like, it's this, it's that. I was like, yeah. They said, we can send you one that we did on, I forget what, some terrorist or something. I was like, oh, great. So I'm going to be a terrorist. Yeah, right. You go from Froster right. to terrorist. terrorist. I, I'll take the Froster, right? So, yeah. And she was like, <laughs> they were like, no, no, it's not like that. And so they were saying look it's just about the psychology and you've been very honest and you're super honest about everything that makes up the person that you are and the things that led to um you know to your your crimes and 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 they said so we'd love to talk to you and you know you'd be interviewed by three different psychiatrists you'll take a battery of tests um there'll be uh, there will be written tests there will be you know all these different types of tests right test on the computer um they do a I don't know. They put something on my head where they track your like, like stick. They like stick the things. No, it was just like a little cap with wires. Oh fuck! (laughs) And uh, I was like, okay. Uh, And so, anyway, yeah. So I agreed to do it. I had to get first. I had to get my judge to agree to allow me to get a passport. And two of my two of my charges out of like whatever fifteen or twenty frauds different fraud charges two of them are passport fraud one is applying for a pass or well fraudulently applying for a passport so you you fraudulent you you filled out a, a fraudulent application for a passport right applied for passports in different people's names so that's one charge then it was use so you, one you got it and then you used a fraudulently obtained passport you actually went out of the country and came back in with it and i had a couple dozen passports you know, all issued by the State Department, but obviously they were in different people's names. So two of my charges are passport fraud. So the judge was like, so that I, we sent it to the judge, and the judge was like, yeah, I'll let him leave. I'll, 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 you know, my probation officer was like, wow, I, I really don't think he's going to let you leave. And then he did. She's like, oh, you got lucky. But of course, I'm leaving to participate in a in a documentary, which is essentially news. Um, and I'm being, you know, and. and well, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna say, but but the point is, is is basically a part of my business of you know how I pay my restitution is I do these things, I sell books, I do. So he said okay, and then he also let me leave the country, so I got to leave the country, went to Amsterdam, hung out in Amsterdam, was there for eight days. Were you surprised that they let you go to Amsterdam? I mean, I was surprised they let me leave the country. Yeah, I when you said you were going, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think they were going to let me leave. The, I didn't think he'd let me get a passport and certainly not let me leave the country and certainly let me leave to go for over a week. And then, you know, because in my – so part of my sentencing and my whole thing is I obviously I owe like $6 million. And part of the whole thing was that I – they were constantly saying like there's money missing. Like there's money that he's stashed away. And if you watch American Greed at the end of it, they say that I've got like – seven million dollars or five million dollars or something in a cayman island account it's just like it's insanity so and, matt everybody wants to know where this fucking yeah, american right. greed is how oh, can oh, i thought you were gonna say how can they is. no 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 i i know no 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 everybody laughs the head off yeah. at the uh when when people bring you up they come in i i can just off the top of my head think of four people you know like i have like 111 now done um and for like if they're in the mortgage thing or they just know who you are they'll be like how the fuck did he do that bank thing because you know like how the feds thought that that was a real bank you oh, go yeah, to yeah. website and shit. right 
I mean, you got when there was a guy named uh, Tico and Glenn, who was uh, uh, one of the biggest mortgage guys around. Right. And he was just dying. They were dying laughing, you know, that, right. that they actually believed that. I mean, it, it was a whole fucking thing. But uh, keep going. Oh, um, well, no. So I went to Amsterdam. And when I got there, like I thought documentary, I thought it was a low budget thing. So I got there and I was like, as soon as I got to the sound studio, it's this big, massive room. Like there's this, it's a bunch of warehouses everywhere. It's like being on the back lot of MGM. And I was like, oh, hell no. This, this is like, there's 25 people standing around. I mean, they're holding boons. They've got, they've got those red cameras. They've got the, like, I'm like, this is, this is a big budget production. They, was it like the, uh, like the Boziac uh, Netflix kind of setup? Bigger. bigger, bigger, bigger. Wow, because that was done. That was actually done in a um, in like a an Airbnb. These guys have a. This is their studio. They've wow. got twenty five people on staff. This is a, that's a lot of money. The cameras are hundred thousand dollar cameras. I mean, these are this is a big deal. So they had that. They had sets built. They had they, they flew in psychiatrists like they th to interview me. I mean, it was a big fucking uh, thing production. So. I do that. I get interviewed a bunch of times. Um, they had like an offset location, offsite location, offset, offsite location. We're driving around. I mean, this was like four or five days of shooting. So then, you know, so we wrapped that up. I got to hang out in Amsterdam a bunch and walked around. I got recognized by a guy in the air, two guys in the airport on my way there, and a guy in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam. Walking through a supermarket, I get recognized. A guy stops me and says, hey man, listen, uh, I noticed him glance at me once. Then I went and got deodorant, I'd forgotten deodorant. So I got deodorant, I was walking out. The guy stops me and goes, excuse me, he said, hey, uh, he said, man, I, I, I love your podcast. And I went, well, I could get the fuck out of here. And I'm in Amsterdam. A guy in Amsterdam Amsterdam. Yeah. And I went, are you serious? That's cool. Well, I think what he did, I think he looked at me and then he pulled his phone out and looked me up. That's what typically happens. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here! And he goes, he goes, yeah, man. He said, I, I've watched a bunch. I watched this thing on on uh, concrete. I watched it on Valuetainment. Uh, I did a bunch of interviews with you. And I was like, I was like, man, are you serious? And I go, hey, I got a channel. Are you subscribed? He goes, no, I'm not. I said, you got to subscribe. He's like, what's this channel? And he, yeah, he looked up. He subscribed to my channel. <laughs> Your subscribers went up. Last time you were here, you were at like 26 or something. You're 33, 34. Damn, right like 35,000 yeah. right now. Yeah, it slowed yeah. down. Yeah. You know, I was getting like 3000 a month. Yeah. And then it slowed down to around 1000 a month. Hey, are you surprised that he got a uh, passport given his charges? Uh, no, not really because, it, like you said, it was for his work and his career. And if it's the way that he pays back his restitution, the judge could always say no. But I, I've very rarely seen somebody get denied for a passport if it's for work-related or business-related. Yeah, I mean, my 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 probation officer was like yeah i don't you're gonna have to ask the judge i don't think you're gonna get it because of because one of my charges is passport fraud you know, that was her issue was like, good, good luck motherfucker fraud, right, right? <laughs> like so but i yeah it was fine it, it um and she recommended it like she well no she, they didn't recommend it she took a they didn't not you know that's how they recommend it they didn't like they're like they never recommend anything really you know they're later like eh we're not going to make a recommendation, which is essentially making a recommendation. Right. Because if they don't want you to do it, then they say, we don't think it's a good idea, Judge. And the judge is like, you know, yeah, okay. They said no. Because am I right? When they when they say, I'm not going to recommend it, basically what they're saying is, I'm not going to go against you. Right. But I'm not putting a word in for you. Right. And yeah. and But the judge knows if they're against it, they'll say something. And the judge almost, doesn't he almost always go with, with the, with, um, probation's viol uh, probation's um, recommendation. Yeah, probation's not really allowed to make a recommendation. Right. The best they'll do is just say, we're not going to block you from doing this. We have no right. problems with you doing it. But if it. they disagree, doesn't the judge usually go with them? Oh, yeah. If, if they disagree, yeah. unless you've got a real compelling argument, the judge would 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 de would de deny it. Right. So, I, I mean, I got lucky. I got, you know, so far, like, the judge has been super cool. My judge has been super cool. So, I got to go um, I came back. So then when I come back, I'm going through. Passport. Well, well, tell me. Okay. So you get there and, and what happens? So you land and then take me through what, what, the, I mean, I get the there, process. I go to the hotel. Hotel's awesome. Um, you know, I walk around Amsterdam for a couple hours. I, I wanted to go to like Anne Frank, um, 
you know, to the museum, but I couldn't go there because they're like eight weeks out, six to eight weeks out on, uh, you know, because of COVID, they're just way behind. A lot of the museums are closed, but I just walked around um, the city. There's tons of canals. There's more canals in Amsterdam than there are in Venice. There's bikes everywhere. Everybody's riding a bike. So they actually have separate car lanes, but they're bike lanes. So it's like a, like a car lane. You'll see two lanes for cars and one lane for bikes. Yeah, I see them out here. Yeah, that's yeah. But it's, it's like there. It's like a real, like here. You have like a little lane. They have like a lane. Like I mean, it's like a serious. There's so many people on bikes. There's bikes everywhere. It's the bike capital of the world. Is it like really? Yeah, really. That's like there's more bikes than there are like people in Amsterdam. Weed everywhere, right? Um, I don't know. I didn't notice anyone. Like no. I didn't go to the red. It was like. <gasps> Did you go to the red light district? Like oh, that's where you get pussy. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't go to the red light district. You like, went there to do business and right, look and, at a couple things, enjoy your time, and get the fuck out. Right. right. Like I spent more time getting buying T-shirts and stuff, um, for you know to mail back to people and like you know some souvenirs and postcards and mail postcards. I didn't get any of them. No, I, well, I know I for, for friends. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that no, there's no more of these. So nah. Um, Fridge is empty. So, uh, yeah. So that was. So I did that. And uh, now, what did you do for the series? I mean, they they interviewed me. So they sit you down in a, you know, they sat me down, and I'm across from the, uh, the different, the different psychiatrist, and then they they actually interview you. And so they one guy asked you a bunch of questions, and then I go to the next one. They ask me questions. One guy did a bunch of tests where they test like your ability to. Um, you know, like read people uh, on whether or not they were lying or how to, how to read inflections or something like that. Like, are you good at picking up on what people are thinking and that sort of thing? And how did you do on that test? I think I scored a 70 or 75, which they said is, he said is very high. He said it's basically the, uh, there's, what he said, he said it's a, basically it's the same. He says it's very high. It's about the same as like the Secret Service. Wow. He said so. It's it's, it's very high. It's up around like um, federal law enforcement has the ability to you know read whatever facial expressions whatever. And I was like, okay. So he said that much higher than most people, which I didn't even you know know. I mean, I think I am. I think I'm pretty good at it, but I think everybody thinks that. So I don't know. Um, anyway, so they did that, and then they did they did a bunch of tests, and then they did some tests on. Basically, to determine empathy, to determine um, what did your empathy strategy? Come out of, uh, what did the empathy? Because the empathy is when you feel like you need to take care of everybody else, right? Well, it, it's when you I understand what you're going through. I empathize. I feel bad about. I like. I feel bad for doing something. I I can put myself in your place. You must have got a zero on that one. I I didn't do well. <laughs> I don't think I did very well. What, what five? Six? I think my as far as violence was concerned, like it was, like I I have no tolerance for violence, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they're but, filming all this while yeah. you're doing, it. yeah, um, yeah. So I don't think it was. Uh, I don't. I you know to be to be honest, like they didn't. They did discuss it with me, but I don't really recall anything being remarkable. So nothing was like extremely high other than reading people and nothing was really low other than um I think so they said something like uh, you're manipulative like extremely like intelligent manipulative like n nothing I thought nothing you didn't already know Right I didn't walk away saying wow I never thought about wow you're right like there was nothing nothing like that Uh so I you know so I did that and then they shot it all and there was a bunch of b-roll where you know you shoot you know in scenes where you know pensive scenes where you're sitting on a windowsill staring out and thinking and so a b-roll is like a it's a setup so like they it like almost like a prop they prop you well no i mean b-roll is typically it's just to help give a visual aid to what's happening so if, if as i'm explaining like you know so we packed up the drugs and we did this instead of just showing me they'll show drugs in a corner being stacked up or they'll show people guys pulling you know to kind of help build the situation without sh or build the um 
you know, build the uh, uh, atmosphere, atmosphere, right, yeah. without having to just focus on me. As I'm explaining it to you, they'll cut from me. If I say, if I say, yeah, man, we were racing, and then they'll cut from me, and they'll show cars racing. It doesn't necessarily have to be me involved in the racing, just to let people know racing, and there's people, you know, and they just have to build that that atmosphere. So, but then they also had these moments with me where I'm staring off or I'm walking and I'm putting my suitcase they're following me with cameras and I put my suitcase down you know little things to help build the whole and keep in mind they have reenactments they had a guy that plays me when I'm like 33 really? years old. Yeah, That's yeah, they, pretty cool. It is. They showed me pictures of like, I don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah, because they're going to chop the fuck out of that. Oh, and, and, I'm, and, and it's going to be whatever it is. Like there were a couple of times when they said things to me. Well, the director guy said stuff to me and I was like, and I was thinking, hmm, like, I don't like the way you just like, what does that mean? Like, what, what, like, oh, like, I'm, that's not good. You know, there's little things that I thought if that's how so I was, I'm like, no, that's not what happened. Well, well what happened? And I'm thinking, well, fuck, if you got that wrong, what else did you get wrong, you know? So there, there were things like that. But, I mean, look, the fact is is that no matter what they really say, I can't imagine they're going to make me look any worse than Dateline or American Greed or any other thing. Yeah, American Greed can't kill you any more than them. Right. So, you know, this time they actually got to ask me questions. They'll cut it up however they want. I, I don't really care. It's going to be on prime or no uh, amazon prime i guess they have different channels and one of them is like discovery 2 where they have all their documentaries or something yeah and it's going to be on that channel here and then in the in the so it will be here in the u.s yeah in europe there's like i guess there's like four there the certain countries are blocked off on different net certain networks or something so they're they're on like three or four different networks there and then but it's all in English, and it's supposedly it's going to be here. They're starting all the episodes in December. I don't know when mine's going to be. Who are the, how, how many episodes? You said there were six, right? There's going to be six. I think there's like four or five now. Okay, and who are the other four or five? Uh, one of them is uh, Christopher uh, Roken, uh, is it Rokencourt, which is a – he's a guy that he was friends with um, – shoot, who is the guy uh, with uh, – um, Rourke, what's his name? Mickey Rourke. He was friends Mr. with okay. Mickey Rourke. He he basically pretended he pretended to be a Rockefeller, and he ripped off people in the Hamptons for millions of dollars. Like fuck, right? Like by saying he's a Rockefeller and throwing parties and staying. I at think the, I read that article. And people, I, I, or people some, just, somewhere I read about right. that, or maybe I saw, uh, maybe he was on YouTube or something. I don't know, but he, yeah. I don't know. He, but he came to me. I mean, came to me. He ca- would sit there and just was hanging out in the Hamptons, but. He says he's a Rockefeller. He's got a French. He's from France. He's French. He's got a French accent. <laughs> and they're saying these motherfuckers are unbelievable. And people are, are offering him money. Like guys are like, look, how much to him? He says he he. I think he said he managed some kind of a a fund, the Rockefeller fund or something. He manages it, and you know this, and they invest in this and this and this. And the people would say, well, what kind of a return? And then he'd say, oh, you know, it's on average, it's it's between eleven and eighteen percent or something ridiculous. And they were like, well, how can I get in? And that's oh, well, I don't know. Let me. What? How much do you have? And you know, they're they're giving them, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, you know, sixty thousand dollars, you know, three hundred. It's millions, and he's running up bills. He's not paying for. Like he, I think he had, I think he went out one time and threw a party and it was like thirty or sixty thousand dollars. And this was twenty something years ago, because I heard about the guy before I went to prison. So, anyway, they had him. They have uh, some guy, the polka. The Polka King? The Polka King. He's coming in. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> they had him. He was there. He was there. That's why he fucking rescheduled. Yeah, because he was supposed to come in and, and he rescheduled uh, Rob Nose. He's personally. like Polish, right? Or yeah, like yeah. That. He's got an accent and he plays that fucking thing. Yeah. yeah. He ran a huge Ponzi scheme. Oh, yeah. The Polka King. You know who that is? But yeah, he, he was going to come in and he. Uh, it's okay. He was going to come in and he. He's uh, useless. He can't hit the button for nothing. Like, move your water thing, put your hand on the. Th- this guy. So, Dan, anyway. Dan's got a lot going on back there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, the, the Pole King was, and he rescheduled. He's like, look, uh, you know, I have to go out of the country. I had to call you when I come back, <laughs> you know. And because I was, I was going to, you know, when he came, when we were scheduling, and I'm like, bring your fucking, the thing that he does. You know what I mean? What is it? It's a. Um... It's, it's a, an accordion. 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 Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. He was on American Greed too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob knows him personally. That's how I got him. Yeah. Well, he's he did one. That's fucking crazy. Um, Wait till Rob hears that. There's several of them, and like, there's a couple, a few other guys. There was a guy from Germany, I think, fell out, uh, and then, um, 
anyway, so there's several there's several other guys. So they're looking for another one right now. Now, how long were you there uh, doing? Eight days. Eight days. Yeah. Wow, eight days. Well, I was only video. I was only there for like five days, and then I had a day by myself. And there was a day flying in, a day, you know, it's it's like a twelve hour flight or six or eight. It's, it's like ten hours. Sorry, it's like ten hours. Right. So in those really five... twelve hours, because I have to fly to Atlanta. That's an, oh fuck. That's an hour and something. Plus the then you got to change planes. That you, blows. Like, by the time it's done, basically you're spending twelve to fourteen hours in the airport that's or terrible. on the planes. Yeah. Now, um, so when when you go to do it those five days, how many hours of footage are they shooting in those five days? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure it's... Like, if you had to take a guess. I mean, I'll bet you they probably have 10 or 12 hours of footage that they'll cut down to... All to like, if you add up the five days, it comes out to 10 or 12 10 hours. 10 or 12 hours. And then they're going to cut that down to, what, one hour? One hour. Well, for 52 minutes or something. Because of the commercials, right? Right. Well, so it's like an hour, but there's commercials or whatever there are. Whatever, It's like right. 52 minutes. It's wow. basically it's an hour program. How would you like to be that editor? Yeah, what a, it, it, they were. I was like, look, you know, well, what do you what do you want? Because I don't want, you know, I hate the fact that you guys are going to have to edit. No, 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 no. It's more's better, more's better, more's better. Of course, they're all getting paid, so what do they care? Um, but the thing is, you have to think like I would go and sit in this room and wait. So you're waiting for an hour and a half, and then they come in. They go, okay, 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 uh, Matt, we need you to come here. Sit down, okay, sit down here. And then they have the cameras kind of around you, going slowly or doing this or that, and they have this, and then. They, for 10 minutes or, or whatever, four minutes, five minutes, and then they go, okay, all right, go ahead and go back. And then you're like, what the fuck was that? And they're like, oh, no, it's just because we need to get the back and the zooming. The, okay, just the scene. Okay, great. Then they go, okay, come. Then you wait an hour. It's like fucking jail. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in the, in the holding cell. And then you wait an hour, and they come back, and they go, oh, come on, come on. You go, okay, okay, uh, take your bag, and we want you to walk in, put the bag down, and sit down. That's it? Yes. And you go, so you walk in, you put the bag down, you sit down. And then they go, okay, okay, come back, get the bag, do it again. But this time, put the bag down slower, sit down slower, lean back and look around <laughs> slowly. Oh, okay. So you go, listen, you, I did that. You did that 10 times. Well, they they want the perfect. They want the perfect. Oh cut. yeah. Oh, yeah, listen, when they're I mean? done, I know this thing's going to look, I may come off like a complete sociopath. Or psychopath, but this is going to look good. There's one thing I know: it's going to look good. And they're saying December they're going to release it. Uh, not, um, I don't know mine, but one. I, of them, I mean, right? the, I don't know when the, they're releasing the, mine. The, the series will come out in December. In December, that's what they said. They said it's supposed to come out in December. I'm assuming it comes out on Discovery Channel. Sounded to me like they already had about two or three of them already cut. You know, they hadn't cut mine yet, obviously. Um, and they were doing another guy after me, and they they have one more guy to do. So once they get him, they'll cut it up and it'll be out. And usually when they do it on like Amazon Prime or Netflix, they have all you can buy the whole series at one clip. I guess I'm now. Do you get residuals from that? Nope. It was no. a one shot deal to go and right. That's it. Okay. And then what happened when uh, you left there? Oh, one. Oh, do, do you know what the name of the show is going to be? psychology uh, or psych the psychology of a con artist okay now when on your way back yeah. if it changes just let me know now on your way back you had an issue well i can when i came into customs when i came into the u.s and i walked through customs so i walked through customs you've been through customs right yeah i've been yeah. through customs yeah so you walk through well, a lot of people listen 95 percent of the united states never leaves the country we don't even know the, the rest of the world exists so they, you go through customs, and the guy, you know, this is what happens. The, the, you're standing in line, and then as the somebody, five people in front of me walks through, and they hand him the, the thing, and the guy says, he goes, oh, what would you, uh, um, what you, you know, what were you doing? Oh, is it business or pleasure? And you were like, they're like, oh, pleasure. They're like, oh, he's like, okay, he scans your thing. Okay. Looks at the screen and goes, okay, here you go. And they walk off. So, was well, it business or pleasure? And they're like, you know, oh, it's pleasure. They scans it. Okay, here. Hey, business or pleasure? Oh, it was business, and it was like, oh, okay. And he looks at the screen. He's like, oh, here, there you go. And then, you know, and, and you know, as you're walking, you know, and then they, of course, they say, pull down your mask. Let me say, okay. And, he, and then I get up there, and the guy goes, okay, uh, was this for a uh, business or pleasure? And I go, uh, business. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he takes the thing, my passport, 
and he puts it way over here, like I'm going to reach over and grab it or something. And he was like, puts it way over here, and he goes, he starts looking through the computer, flipping through one screen, and he's reading and reading, then another screen. Everybody else was out of that thing in like 10 seconds, maybe 15. I'm sitting there. So like a minute goes by. That's a long time to be just sitting there while he's looking quiet. And I go, I go, <laughs> I said, how bad is it, bro? <laughs> like that. And he goes, he, he looks at me and goes, well, uh, cause it is what it is. And I went, what is, what does that mean? I said, bro, am I going to make my flight? <laughs> and he goes, oh, well, you're definitely going to have to talk to somebody. Yeah. He said, you're going to have to talk to somebody. Now, were you really concerned at this time? No, I was kind of, because I know I have permission. So I kind of know, but he's acting like this is an issue. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, I do have another flight, you know? So I have another flight in like, you know, it, it, 45 minutes. But I mean, you know, you got it. You got stuff to do. I mean, it's it's not easy to get to your, I got to change. I got to do, I got to get through this. I got to get through you know, I got to go through customs. I got to go get my bag. I have to then check my bag back in because when you come in, they don't take your international flights. They don't take your bag and stick it on your domestic flight. You have to go get your bag, bring it, check it in. You got to the whole. That's a long process, and I'm leaving for my late. My plane's already late, so I got an issue. So I'm like, okay, well, and he sits there, and all of a sudden, I see a guy walk out of a room, walking towards us, and he. The passport guy takes my passport, sticks it in this clear plastic Ziploc thing. So the guy leaves. Well, I'm sitting talking to the main guy, and all of a sudden this guy walks out of a building, or walks out of a room, sorry, a room down the hall. And I can see him coming and coming and coming and coming. Walks over. The one U.S. Customs guy grabs that little envelope, turns it, hands it to him. The guy grabs it and says, Mr. Cox, you're going to have to follow me. And I was like, like, I don't, who's this guy? Like, this guy's been nothing but, look, he obviously hit a button or something. And I was like, oh, um, okay. And we walk, and he goes, do you have luggage? And I went, yeah, I do have luggage. we got to go get your luggage. So we, go, we grab my luggage. We walk it over. And he says, you're going to have to have a seat here. So I sit down there. And then another guy comes up, and he's like, um, he's like, Mr. Cox? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, okay. He said, so uh, you're going to have to see somebody. You're going to have to talk to somebody. Wait a little bit. It'll be Mr. So-and-so. He's right down here. You're going to have to talk to him. And I'm like, okay, okay. So about 10 minutes go by. And then that guy calls me and I walk over to him and I said, Hey, what's going on? And he says, Hey, uh, and he's got my passport. So the other guy walked over there and gave my passport. He's got my passport. He said, so, um, I walk away. Hey, what's up? And he goes, so, um, cause what's this about? And I went, <laughs> no, are you worried at all at this time? No, I'm worried about my flight. That's all. Yeah, you're worried I'm, about I'm getting a citizen. The fuck home. You're letting me yeah, in. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what I did. Yeah, I'm right, staying right. here. You're not going to say, oh, you're going to have to go back to England. And you have approval from probation, right. so you don't have to worry about that. You have nothing in your bag, so you don't right. have to worry about but that. But here's what he said. He goes, he did make a comment that he said, um, he goes, do you have anything? And I, for a split second, I thought, like, they think I have drugs. But, uh, you know, but then I was like, oh, and I went, and I, I looked at him, I went, no. And he said, do you have anything you need to give me or and he said, do you, do you know what this is about? I said, I have no idea, bro. You guys called me. I said, I mean, I, I'm a felon. And he goes, nah, it's more than that. And I looked at him and he goes, do you have anything? And I went, and that's when I thought he th thinks I have drugs or something. And then I, I went, um, I said, he said, like, I go, oh, I said, you mean like to leave, that allows me to travel or something? He goes, yeah. And I went, yeah. I go, I got a travel permit and I have the motion from my judge that says I'm allowed to get a passport. And he goes, oh, okay, well. And he looks over those, and he goes, okay, okay. And then he sits him down. <laughs> they always sit him over here. Like, I'm going to grab it and run out of the fucking, like, I'm going to get out anywhere. Um, and then he looked at me, and he said, um, he goes, uh, what was this? He said, did you run, like, a, is it like, this like a Ponzi scheme or something? And I went, no. So I'm assuming he saw my bank fraud charges, but didn't know the specifics of it. I said, no, bro. I said, I mean, I was, I was, um. I said, I ran like a real estate scams for like 10 years. And I, and, um, he said, you have restitution. And I went, yeah. And I have restitution. And, uh, I said, but that, that's, that's it. But I'm allowed to leave. He's like, well, what were you doing? Like, where'd you go? I said, I, I was being interviewed for this TV show, this, the, a documentary. He goes, what's it about? I go, it's about con men. And he goes, that's appropriate. And I started laughing. I said, exactly. Right. Like my judge said I could go and that's it. And he goes, 
what did you do? What exactly when you say real estate fraud? Like, what did you do? And I went, well, I, I did this. He goes, cause you know, he goes, we have like a, a hold notice on you. And I go, still, he goes, well, it's expired. I said, okay. He's well, still it's, it's still there. Like it was there like, at one time. Like, yeah, I mean, right. I know it's expired, but <laughs> like it's, still on the computer like this is an issue and now they get all fucking interested right and, and you're just trying to catch this goddamn flight just right trying to get out of here man so i tell them look here's what i did i bought a bunch of properties and i would make these synthetic identities they'd buy the properties and then they pull out money and i pull out the money and then i'd take off and you know he's like oh okay okay he said they, they're doing like a thing i said yeah they do they do these things and this is what i do for a living and this is what i do he's like so you go to other countries I said, well i said for instance i said i'm going to I said in a couple of days, I said, I'm flying into Alabama and I'm speaking at the Alabama uh, mortgage brokers, um, mortgage broker, professional mortgage brokers association in Alabama. I said, they'll pay me to get up on stage and talk in front of like 300 people. And I talk for an hour and then that's it. And he goes, really? And I went, yeah. I said, listen, bro, honestly, I have a flight. He goes, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, you can go, you can go. He gave me this stuff. He goes, yeah, yeah, walk down that hallway right there. You'll be fine. I get out down the hallway, go through the thing, get down. Go to go get on the rail or the um, people mover that takes you to the um, to your gate, and it's closed because there's a like a bomb threat. There was somebody, oh my God. right? Really? For I your mi- luck, right? Oh yeah, I missed my flight, so I missed my flight, and then it's three. It's a three three and a half hour delay, and then eventually I have to get my flight rescheduled. I get on. I mean, literally, I'm traveling going on like 18, 20 hours at this point before I finally get home. I get home at like 11 o'clock at night. Was the bomb, they found out that the bomb threat it was, was no, it, was, it wasn't even a bomb threat. It was just, it was a, there had been a bomb threat the week before. But now this week, somebody had left like their luggage in the people mover. So somebody just like left a piece of luggage and walked away. Which they, they just genuinely just forgot this one piece. But, but of course you never know. Right, but they're freaked out. Mm-hmm. They're like, holy shit, which I get it. Like this is a, a fairly good sized luggage. How do you forget that? And a week earlier, they had a bomb threat. So they're freaking out. So, you know, I end up getting on my flight. I get home at like 10 o'clock. I don't even get home to my apartment until like 11. And you're just dead. Yeah. I'm you got to be dead after right. that long, long flight. Right. Now, when you were over there, were, were they locked down, locked down, or just certain parts? No, but no. Mask, it was, mask everywhere? Um, or mandatory? No, people were like, I think most people, half the people had them on, half didn't. So it wasn't like a mandatory thing. It, I think it was that when if you walked into an establishment that wasn't like if you ate, it basically was like Florida, mm-hmm. you know, but there was a lot of places that were just booked because you can only have so many people in a museum or the museums were closed, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, it was. So as far as like the COVID, you would, you would equate it pretty much to Florida in a way. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's the city's amazing. Like I told everybody, I, everybody I wrote a postcard to. I said, "Listen, if next time I go on the run, I'm coming, <laughs> coming here. I go on the run, buying a place. This is where I'm staying." Okay, so that that hopefully will come out in December. Yeah, so we can see. Uh, so your head can get even bigger if that's even possible. I mean, I just depends on how bad they make me. But look, it's like the uh, the home title lock commercial. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I keep getting, I mean, I, you know, keep getting people that call me or say stuff to me. I have a buddy named Bill, uh, Bill Stortz. And Bill said the other day, this is so funny, because he said the other day he works at a uh, Salvation Army. And he said one of the guys that is lives there, or not lives there, but staying there, comes up to him because he was like a counselor kind of guy. And it comes up to him and goes, hey, man, he goes, you got to check this out, bro. He said, this guy right here stole like $15 million. He lives in Tampa. And Bill looked at Bill and goes, yeah, I know him. That's Matt Cox. He's a friend of mine. I talked to him on the phone the other day, a couple days ago. So I talked to him all the time. And he goes, no. He goes, yeah. Yeah. He said, I actually used to work for Consortium Financial Services, which was his mortgage company. I used to work there for several months. Uh, and, he, and he was like, are you serious? He goes, yeah. He goes, so that happened. He goes, then his brother-in-law called him like the next day and said hey you know your buddy matt cox he goes, yeah he's a i was watching cnn and there was a commercial and he's on the commercial and he goes yeah yeah i know he's doing some commercials up so he then he then calls me and he's telling me this and i said bro i'm huge i'm everywhere i'm yeah. everywhere and he he starts laughing i said i and he goes he goes bad that's 
in, in like 24 hours or a day or two, two people. I go, I'm telling you, I'm huge. I'm huge, Bill. I'm huge. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, you got to watch the the last interview I did with Matt. And uh, we, we played oh, the commercial. Oh, yeah, Remember, we yeah. played the whole commercial. Nice. You know, that's right. That's and right. I, I I couldn't believe it because Newt Gingrich. What was his position when he was uh, in Speaker of the House? Speaker of the fucking Speaker House. Speaker of the House, you, bro. Yo, so you got the 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 king of mortgage fraud with the Speaker like, of the like, House. Like nobody bigger. America's most wanted. This motherfucker does a commercial that they're playing. Still, I saw it. I fall over oh, when they, I see it. They playing it more and with more? fucking Newt Gingrich. It's it's the last video I did with him. I think it's uh, number one hundred six or one hundred five, and he. I mean, and it's not just like a two second fucking commercial. Oh no, it, you know there's an infomercial. There's a thirty minute infomercial also. I've seen both. You know what's funny? He's like he's actually tall. Like I don't know if you know who Newt Gingrich is, but he you, if you if you actually like to me always seeing him, I never thought he was that tall. He's he's pretty tall. Like everybody's taller than me. But I walked in. I was like, this guy's like five ten, five eleven. I thought he was like short because he's chubby. I just thought he was short and fat. He's not. He's a big guy. He's a, actually a pretty tall guy. Well, yeah, I mean, I, five ten to me is tall. That's tall to me. That's huge. That's massive. I thought he was like maybe you're six one. You're how tall guy. are you? I I am five nine, and I actually served Newt Gingrich breakfast, so I know who. Uh, he is. What? Oh, really? really? Where? I served him breakfast. We I, used were... to, I used to live in a bed and breakfast in North Carolina called the Country Inn, and he came in there and ate. I didn't know who he was. I was fifteen years old. Oh, what, what is it about your height? He looks like a kind of like Humpty Dumpty. He's just kind of like a oh, oompa loompa. <laughs> right, but he's tall. He's tall. I'm mean, like, I didn't. I thought he was. I thought he was like our height. Yeah, no. I and mean, I'm taller than you, but no. Uh, but he's tall. He's taller than me. He's at least five inch, four or five inches taller than me. That's damn. pretty. That's like five ten, five eleven. I just I couldn't believe it. I I had to watch it a few times, even though I watched it with yeah. you. You know what I mean? And I saw it. I went back to my own fucking video to watch it, and I couldn't believe it. I sent it to everybody. I said, "Remember, Matt? Hmm. I said this fucking guy just did a commercial. I didn't realize what his position was. Speaker of the fucking house. I thought he was just." Uh, you know, because I don't get into the whole political thing where right. I know all. The, I don't. Have well, time it was. For that. This is also before our our time. This guy, he was speaker of the house by like back in the eighties and. But 90s. still, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you got America's most wanted king of fraud with the fucking speaker of the house. I mean, what are the odds of that, Matt? Come well, on. I, I mean, two different positions, obviously. So <laughs> he, he. Um. What's funny is now I do. I've been doing commercials for, uh, home title lock. So I do not commercials, but I mean. Like they'll they'll call like a um, a radio personality and they'll say, hey, we want you to have this guy. Can you would you interview this guy for like five minutes or something, ten minutes about title fraud? And then they explain it to him. And then the guy's like, yeah, sure. So then he, they call me up and then I do an interview. So when I do an interview with these guys, they want me to do interviews because like people don't think it's a crime. I mean, people, like, they'll talk to people and they'll say, oh, no, no, I have title insurance. They're like, well, why do you think you have title insurance? Well, when I bought my house, I have title insurance. I got title insurance. Well, title insurance covers you up to the day you close. So all title insurance says is I'm, we're insuring that the title is in your name right now. So tomorrow, if someone transfers your title, you're not covered. But people still think they're covered. They're like, oh, I have title insurance. No. You, all we're insuring is that it's currently in your name. What happens after that? But then people think, well, you can't take it out of my name. Sh oh, yeah, I can. Sh watch me. So I'm doing these spots where I explain what title fraud is because their big thing is people call into home title lock and they say, well, what is this? And they try and explain it. And this is what we do is we monitor your title. And people are like, oh, well, you can't just take my title. Well, no, people can. No, oh, that's not even a thing. No, that doesn't happen. And they're like, well. No, it, it does happen. But I wish I could remember. Somebody, I was with somebody in here and we played it and they were like, wow, they can do that? Because you had said, because right. you, you were like, sure, but you're like, yeah, they, they can right. take it. Um, Like the in this day and age, 2021, if you wanted to, could you do the same thing you did before? Be, it's easier now than it was before. I could go on, to, on I could go on the, um, on the, uh, the county's public records, in public records, Pull up your address, get your warranty deed, find out your um, your mortgage. I could satisfy your mortgage. It's a one-page document. All I need is a notary stamp, and I can order 15 notary stamps in 15 bit different people's names online. Nobody's checking. So I order the notary stamp. I then 
make a satisfaction on mortgage. I I then stamp it. I sign the name to anybody. I used to sign the name of um, C. Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons. Yeah, I nobody's know. checking. I, I know. Right. I know. So nobody. So it's the same as it was then. It's easier. You're saying. Right. Right. So then I satisfy the. I satisfy it. Then I transfer the warranty deed out of your name into somebody else's name. In any fake ID I want, fake identity I want. I go open up a couple bank accounts. I then send a. I, I can then go and I can borrow money on your house. I can borrow money on your house when you're living there. So. I get the money, I put it in the bank accounts, I pull the money out or I transfer the money and, I'm, and I disappear. You don't even realize anything's happened until the banks come to foreclose on what you think is your house, but it's not your house anymore. It's in somebody else's name. And by then you're gone. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. But people don't even think that's a thing. They think that's not possible. That's not that it, it's. So here's the thing. I used to have to go downtown and search public records downtown. Then I'd have to make the documents myself. Then I'd have to go downtown and record the documents. Now I don't have to go downtown. I can do it at my on my laptop, sitting in Starbucks. I can make the do, make the the whole document, and then I can file the document online. I don't even have to go down. So at this point now, you never see me on a camera anywhere. I can open up the bank account online. I can transfer the funds online wow. i can do so at this point i never i could do the whole thing sitting in my boxers at at, at home using a, a socket server you know um which randomly changes your you know your ip address and, and and so it doesn't even matter i don't even need the things i used to have to make my own pay stubs now you go to paystubs.net or dot com or whatever and you just have your pay they'll they have a pay stub generator they make your pay stubs you can put any employer on it anything you print them out make my own w-2s i can do everything online see now you would think that now in 2021 it would be a hundred times harder because you were doing it at it's the end easier. it was what 2009 when did they grab 2006 you? 2006 so it's easier in 21 than six i mean and, you and would know, never think that and i know multiple um title people for, uh title uh, that work at title agencies and own title companies that'll tell you oh it's easier now than it you we used to never we used to very seldomly see they said we see it all the time now wow and uh, yet, isn't that mind blowing? That, that you, I mean, you can get away with that now, easier than 2006. I mean, you would think technology would have caught up with it, but back then technology kind of backfired though with this situation. Well, I'm right? gonna think about it. Back then, you had to go into the bank. Like yeah. I don't have to go to an, into a bank to do open it a bank all account. Online. Do it all online. You could transfer money online. You could do anything online. I could buy. I could go and I could buy gold or silver and have it mailed to me to an abandoned house, and pick it up. Now. You're like a catch me if you can, you you know that like like if you would do a movie, like it, it it's kind of like a catch me if you can movie, you know, yeah, with Tom I, Hanks. Right. Why don't you push yourself like to do a movie movie? I mean, I've written a book, so I wrote my book, yeah. and I have a, a bunch of stories written. But my fear of pushing my own story is that if I push my own story, let's say it gets made. Okay, so let's say it gets made, and you know, first of all. People think, oh, you make millions. I don't make millions. Right. You make a few hundred thousand. If you're lucky, you might make a few hundred thousand. So you make a few hundred thousand. Yeah, but then everybody would know about you, and then you could do lectures and this and that. You're right. You could probably, I could probably spin it and turn it into something, but you become, I would become, you know, a one hit wonder. So I become kind of a, a Jordan Belfort. Like, is that great? Sure it is. But what's Belfort doing? That's anything other than than resting on that movie, which is not a bad life. I'm not saying it's a bad life. You know, God bless him. But my whole thing is I went to prison and I wrote a bunch of other inmate stories. So if I get a few of those stories made, then I become the the um, Ben Mesrick of true crime. You know, I become the. I become a, a, a you know the the Dick Wolf of true crime, you know, and then maybe I get this story made into a documentary, and maybe I can get that spun into some kind of a series, and then I can get this one. You get one or two made, and then you get to walk into Netflix and say, "Look, I want to do this one. This is what I'm thinking." And they look at you and they go, "This is the guy that wrote that story that got turned into that documentary that's now a series on Hulu. This is the guy that's got this documentary or this series." That's on net or, or or is on currently on on uh, FX. This is the guy that there's a movie being that they just put out that movie. Like 
then you walk in and you have some real credit. So then if I walk in and I say, I want to make my movie, then I've got something. I mean, I don't, all of this, none of this could work out at all. Does it make sense? Like, it doesn't matter if it works out because the truth is, you know, I'm supposed to be in prison right now. So at this point, like my life was over. So I'm just thrilled every time I can buy a, a, a Starbucks coffee or go through McDonald's or, you know, roll out of bed without the guards waking me up at five o'clock in the morning screaming, get out of bed. You know, so I'm I mean, I'm I'm OK if nothing ever happens. I, I paint paintings and I pay my rent. And how long have you been out now for? Two years. Yeah. So with that mindset after two years, uh, I can tell you're done. You're done. At least it seems like you're done. Yeah. I mean, forever. So now I would think it would go the other way. You mean way. done? Like, you mean like, done like, like, like I'm not going to do any more crime. Right, okay. right. I, because, you know, it's been two years and it's not oh, even a thought. Yeah. You well, know what and, I mean? And this is the thing, too. Like, I'm not, it's not like I'm rolling in money. Right. You know, I'm doing okay. I make my bills. I'm perfectly happy. I like trying to get these things turned into something. And maybe I'll get them turned into something. Maybe I won't. But either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you never give up. See, now I would think it would be the other way around. Like you do a movie on you because that's a that, that's a done deal. But, but that's what happened with Belford. So they did the movie on Belford. But right? wait, hold on. Now let me let me finish. What I'm saying is, you do the movie on you. All right. Now that's they're, they're, that's definitely a movie, a thousand percent. Right. Now the difference between you and Belford is that Belford doesn't know how to write a book. Belford doesn't know how to write. A synopsis. Belfort doesn't score 75 out of 100 on reading people and then being able to, you know, but okay. I mean, that goes into your writing, okay? So you have, you know, what, 10 books? You know, I'm sure you got another yeah. five. Se seven books and tw over 20 synopses on stories, yeah. Okay, so let's. Like articles, like articles. Right, like. so let's just say you have 30 books that you could make, okay? Let's just say that, right, to make it easy. So that's the difference. So Belfort has Belfort. That's it. He's Jordan Belfort. He's got The Wolf of Wall Street. He can't sit down with you and write your book or Dan or me and write my book. That's all he's got. You got the books. Now, in my opinion, and you know this industry better than me, if you come out with your movie, because they will take that as a movie, there's no way that that's not going to go into a movie. I mean, that's really, really good. Then once that does turn into a movie or starts as a document and then turns into a movie... Now you've got the hype. And the difference is you got 30 fucking books of other guys. And they, I would think personally as a business guy, that they would say, okay, well, he had a killer movie. These got to be good too. So we'll at least take a look at them. I don't know what we're going to do with them, but we'll take a look at it. That, that's just my thinking. Okay, here's the problem is that I wouldn't have anything to do with my movie. So I would sell, I would option the film rights to my movie and then somebody else makes it. Like I don't have anything to do with it. Like they're not going to listen to me. Like I may be a consultant. I may be even be an executive producer, but in the end, the production company is going to have final say so. Like you, they never option the film rights where they say, and you have total say so because they're going to be like, we're not investing $20 million into a film that you get to call the shots. Like, who the fuck are you? You might suddenly flip out during and say, no, I was wearing a purple shirt. You got to put a purple shirt on that guy. Hey, that's not, you got to say it like, let's do the whole thing over again. Like, what, what are you doing? Well, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, they're going to add, they're going to ad lib it, of course. You well, know, no, they're going but... to do whatever they want. That's what happens. But what I'm saying to you is this. So let's say they did a movie on me. They do a movie on me. Here's the problem. Now, everybody that looks at me says, hey, that's Matt Cox. That's that con man guy. That's Matt Cox. That's, that's from the movie Shark in the Housing Bowl. That's Matt Cox. That's Matt Cox. So all they do. And so when I walk into a boardroom and I say, hey, my name is Matt Cox. Uh, I wanted to pitch this this other story that I've written. They go, hey, you're the guy from. You see what I'm saying? You become right. a one hit wonder. And here's the thing. The reason I say that is Belfort, after the Wolf of Wall Street, before he started doing all of his tours, and started doing lectures and all that, which has died down considerably. And then he sparked it up again because he wrote a book called the stream, stream, the the straight the line, yeah, straight line theory or straight line method or yeah, something. Yeah, I actually bought the book. All right. So, did you read it? I read half of it, or so, listened to audio. I listened oh, to okay. half of it. So he he wrote that, and then of course that gives him another whole bunch of series or a bunch of uh, he can he can now do these weekend things courses, but that'll die down. So he's really pushing the whole thing, but. What, what you don't realize is this is what he did try and do. After The Wolf of Wall Street, he pitched to Hollywood a series based on the, the excesses of the 1980s. He basically wanted to take The Wolf 
of Wall Street and turn it into a series, but without using him because he doesn't own his life rights anymore. So he can't use him. He was going to use a fictitious guy who and talk about like this guy's a broker and all these. Di- he was going to put him all these scenarios. He's going to drag it out. And we're going to do this. We're going to you know kind of like um, suits. Mm-hmm. That sort of a thing. But he was pitching that kind of a thing, and the problem is. He couldn't get it off the ground. I think he couldn't get it off the ground because no, he could not walk into a boardroom without people thinking, hey, it's the Wolf of Wall Street. Like, they don't take you seriously as anything else. Like, you know, I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I, I see the two sides to it. So, and I guess now that I think it through a little bit more, although I think I think both ways would work with you, you know, but, I, but now that I think it through, but you're right because... You have thirty. So not you have thirty books that could be made, right? Ten are out. You got twenty more that could be made. If you did that now, then you're taken away from that because they're just going to be Matt Cox. Right. But when right? here's the thing. Look, when was the Wolf of Wall Street? When did it happen? Uh, in, in the late eighties. Yeah. Right. Okay. When did the movie come out? Twenty years later. Yeah. Okay. Twenty. So. I mean, it's not like I don't have time. It's not like my story when I walked out of prison was already 13 years old. Yeah. So now it's been a couple of years. Great. So I have another five years. I could start pitching at any time. My story is not going to get old. Mortgages are still a thing. And it will either get made or it won't get made. I really could care less. So, you know, I'd like to You'll get made. You'll get made. I would like to try and get these other stories, like John Boziak's story. Like, that one would be great if that got made. It'd be great if Amadeo's got turned into a documentary. It would be great if, if all of these things happened. That would be great. Um, you're you're behind Boziak, obviously. I mean, um, I, mean, I helped write his story. Yeah, right. I wrote the, the book, yeah. What are the odds, do you think, that that, that goes somewhere? 75, to, I'd say 75% that it gets bought and turned into uh, some kind of a documentary. If it gets turned into a documentary, I'd say we got a 50% chance of getting that converted and turned into some type of a series because his story would make a great series. Series, I agree with you. And the follow-up question to that would be, and you know I always ask you this and you hate it, um, what do you think, the? by the way it looks right now, what do you think the ETA w- would be on that? Were they were good? I mean, I know I mean, it's, say, it's like a. We, I'd say if, if we don't have a deal in six months, keep in mind you get a deal, and then they have to start shooting. So then let's say it's another six months. So I'd say a year before maybe a year, t- about like a, 12 to 18 months before it would show up on something like FX or Hulu or Fox. I mean, or um, Fox. Like Amazon Prime, whatever. Netflix, whatever it may be. I'd say uh, 12 to 18 months if it happens. If it doesn't happen between in that time, then it's it's going it, to be a tough shot. Yeah, right? it may not. You know, may yeah. not happen at all. Like, and I'll keep pitching Amadeo. I'll, I'll keep pitching all of these stories. Have but, you gotten? Um, and we did one on Amadeo, by the way. If you haven't seen it, watch it. That was a good one. And yeah. then we did one with the documents to prove that he really did yeah, yeah, do yeah. everything he did. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so make sure stuff. you guys check that out and get the book. It's a good book. Um, did you get any feedback with uh, Amadeo for a movie? Or not a movie, like a documentary or anything like that? I mean, I'm, um, I mean there's a documentary comp- company that's interested in doing something with him, and they've spoken with him several times. Like whether or not they, whether that pans out or not. Pans out or not, I don't yeah. know. Um, any of the other ones? Um, there's a, a possibly a documentary on uh, Atonement. Um, there's, um, of course, Bozak, which is bent. Um, and that those are the only ones, you know, I'm, my whole thing is I'm kind of banking on Bozak. Cause then if that happens, I, then I'm able, when I pitch the other stories, I'm able to say, I got this thing coming up yeah. and that, you know, you have a portfolio, right. right? I would love to get scraped together enough money to actually do sizzle reels on certain stories and that way when you walk in or you pitch someone you say let me send you the sizzle reel you send them the somebody the sizzle reel they're like oh my i can see it okay now for people that don't know i i've asked you before yeah um explain what a sizzle reel so like is. A, a trailer is it's like they're like a minute and a half two minutes on a movie that's been made right so you you know so 
whatever, um, you know, 007, you know, whatever, the new James Bond movie, you, there's like a two minute trailer or a minute or a 90 second uh, trailer. Yeah, Every, like when you go to watch a movie, you go, you click on trailer to see if you want to buy it. Right, right. And, right, and they're well, and they're also on TV and whatever. So um, nobody really watches TV anymore, but no. whatever. So there's trailers. Well, that's after the movie's been made. Before the movie gets made, when you're just trying to get the budget to make the movie, you go to a production company and you say, here is the sizzle reel, and you'll put something together that shows what gives you as much as you can do with virtual with very little money to come up with the basic show the basic concept of what you're trying to do so that when you go into a production company and you say, look, here's a sizzle reel, here's a story, you explain the story, boom, 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 and we want to shoot it like this and this and this and this, and here's a sizzle reel, and then they play the sizzle reel, maybe they do some reenactments. Maybe they do a quick car chase. Maybe they even pull a car chase from another movie because this is never for for public consumption. This for public consumption. This is or distribution. This is only for the production company for the for the people that own that the um, the executives that run the production company. This, this is see. your pitch. This is your pitch. Right. right. And so nobody's ever. It's not going to be. You know, it's not going to be put out there for the public, so they can use anything. Like, they, let's say there's it's it's a fuck it's a war movie, and there's going to be this and that. Like they may pull 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 footage from Saving Private Ryan. They might pull it from Enemies at the Gate. They might pull different types of war scenes and put those all in there, which technically is like you know you're not allowed to do that. But what does it matter? I'm just showing it to this executive. It's it's not I'm not making money on it, so it's fine. So they'll put a whole thing together and clip it in with some other scenes of their, the guy they want to play the lead character, and they'll say, now, obviously, this guy will be Brad Pitt. So imagine Brad Pitt as this guy, and here's this, here it is, and then you show the whole thing, and they, they watch it, and they go, wow, I like the way you did the such and such, and this, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, okay, how much do you need? Okay, well, you know, we're going to talk about it, and that's it. They put it together. So it's, it's just a, th- and it's never, it's typically about three minutes. Man, if you had that and you could do that with all your books, whew. yeah, it'd be great because then I could start pitching it and say, "Look, let me send you the sizzle reel." Because then you can massively do that. Now, what's something like that cost? Roughly? I mean, if if you want to do it inexpensively, like the great thing is, you don't have to spend a lot of money because I have the these are documentaries and I have the actual subjects. So. If you were going to do like a fictitious movie, like a, a, a fiction movie, you have to get actors and everything. I, you don't have to. All you have to do is interview the subject. So a good portion of it is just the interview cut with a lot of B-roll and maybe some voiceover. So you could do them for five to $10,000 and get a really solid good one for five to 10000 But you would have to pay somebody else to do it? Well, I mean, I would have to pay somebody to interview the guys. Like you would do an interview with the guys and then you would do B-roll and then you do voiceovers. And you'd have to have somebody edit the whole thing. Could I do that? Yeah. But do I have a couple weeks to do all of that? I don't have a couple weeks. I mean, I'm basically paycheck to paycheck. Like I, I can't go two weeks and put together a sizzle reel. Okay. But I mean, so for five, 10 grand, you could be able to do sizzle reels for everything you have. Per, st- more, per, like, more like five grand per, per sizzle reel. Per yeah. sizzle reel. Right. Okay. I got you. Right. Okay, and then you were talking about uh, Joe Vitale, right? You're, yeah, you're working on that. What he are you would doing? be amazing. He would be great because, like we were talking earlier, yeah. you were like, "Yeah," because you get to use Lamborghinis. Yeah. You get, his whole thing is Lamborghini strip clubs. Um, great guy. Um, boiler rooms. I mean, he has. He really does have like a. He's got a better than the Wolf of Wall Street story. I got to get his ass on here. Oh, he's. I was cool as fuck. He was. He's cool. He's, he's cool, cool he's as a, hell. Real yeah. laid back. And he's in. <laughs> He's, he's, he's here, a right? Big guy too. Yeah, you're going from here to to work with him, right? Yeah, I, I was there earlier, and we were going. We were. I was showing him how to do screen prints. Yeah. Okay, so everybody wants to do screen prints now because you're done. All right, so what are you doing with uh, Vitaly? Like, what's what are you doing? I mean, with him? So I wrote a story about him called um, called um, uh, God. It was uh, Atonement. It's great. It's yeah. great. I, I read it. It's it's excellent. And. Um, you know, it's about his rise in the as a uh, you know as the well he, first he was a mortgage broker I mean a mortgage broker first he was a stockbroker and then he started doing a private equity raises to, so he's the guy that raises money for companies that are going that that are basically uh, startups mm. so you got some company that you're saying hey 
I can take this company, I can make a ton of money, but I need $5 million. So what he does is he was going in, and you're technically only allowed to charge like like very little, like 6 or 7% of the raise. So if you raise $10 million, you're only allowed to make, let's say, five five hundred thousand or $600,000. You can't make that much money. Um, he's going in and he's saying, you need $5 million? Great. We're going to raise... Nine million, and I get four million. Now, but he doesn't tell the customers that. So what happens is you're like, I only need five million, but to get the five million, I have to be in debt to for nine million. But without this guy, I never get the five. So they go, okay, it's already illegal what he's doing. But he just now he gets four million dollars. You get stacked with the debt. The investors that put up the money, they put up this guy put up a hundred thousand. This guy gave you fifty. This guy gave you ten. This guy gave you two hundred. Those people think they're raising nine million to be put into the company. So the company's gonna be worth at least nine million. No, it's not. It's worth five million because four million went to Vitaly. But he's raising the money. So invest so people that need money are coming to him because they're like, oh, he can get it done. The problem is he's charging forty to forty five percent. And that's a massive amount of money. And this is fucking with the FCC, right? Oh, oh yeah, he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's got it. That's a good story, man. It, and, and, and you well, just you, have the synopsis. You thing? understand? There's two murders in it. Yeah. I His know. business partner tried to murder him. His it was it's a whole thing. They're driving. He's driving. He's had like two Lamborghinis, yeah, Lamborghinis like three all Ferraris. Kinds. He had like a three and a half, four million dollar yeah. uh, house in Florida. A four million dollar house is a mansion. Yeah. Like in in L.A., it's basically a ranch. Um, yeah, a, a small ranch. Style and house. in Pennsylvania, it's a fucking mansion the size of the state. Right. It's yeah. You know. <laughs> but he's he's banging beautiful fucking chicks. Um, I mean, you know, and he's he's it's very much a, a Wolf of Wall Street kind of. Thing. And the murder. When I read the synopsis, the mur- one of the murders was was all fucked up. It, oh, what, r- what? right. Was his best friend? Well, first of all, his business partner tries to get him to come to the house. He's already murdered his his uh, girlfriend tries to get Vitaly to come around the back of the house so he can kill him. Like he's going to set right, it up. Right, that's what it was. He's going to set it up to make it look like he broke into the house, killed my girlfriend, and I killed him. Like he's got it all set up. Like he's telling him, well, come around the back of the house. Come around the... And he's like, no, bro, I want to come in the front. What do you do? What? You know, he realizes something's wrong. Right, right. And then, and then what was it that you were... I remember when we were talking about Vitaly before he was out, you were, you were trying to call a, a detective... We did call the detective because uh, he, he, well, what the the girl the with you tell it because you wrote I forget it was fucking yeah two yeah years ago one of his it. his brokers one of the guys that worked for him who's also like his best friend he dies of a drug overdose this is what they say say right right they said it was a drug overdose he kept saying it's not a drug overdose like the guy he didn't he didn't have a drug overdose like he he did have a drug problem but there's no way he overdosed well. It turns out that guy was getting drugs from this chick, right? That he's he's seeing. Well, he's 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 banging her. He's seeing her, and so he ends up. It, you know, this is the thing. What Vitaly said and what the girl says. The girl's name is V, and I've met with her. And I've spoken with her. She says, yes. You know, there was there was money in the guy's house. I was, she says I had a relationship with the guy and we were seeing each other. I talked to his fiance. She says they were not seeing each other. So, I mean, I've talked to everybody. Mm -hmm. She's saying they weren't and that she's saying that, that the girl V murdered her or V had him murdered. V is saying the fiance had him murdered. Well, but she says that this guy named, um, Oh gosh, his name was uh, Jesus. Um, they call, uh, what was his name? It doesn't matter. They they can read it when when it comes yeah. out. Well, anyway, this guy, this there's a, a guy that was involved with all of them that basically V says and everybody says gave Vitaly's best friend a hot shot and then they robbed him. And V says the place was robbed. V is saying that, um, that this guy robbed him and she says he killed him. She says he killed him. He robbed them. I mean, I got the police reports and everything. They called V. They called the guy. Um, I can't fucking believe I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, um, like, and, and they just like hung up on like they they wouldn't talk to him. So anyway, eventually I uh, contacted V and talked to her, talked to the um, talked to the the uh, fiance, 
And the bottom line is this guy ends up getting, um, he ends up dying uh, in a tub. And, you know, they put him in the, in the tub. I don't know where he got killed, but they put him in the tub. So what happens is when Vitaly goes to jail, Vitaly meets the guy that murdered his, his best friend. Oh, shit. And the guy ends up, doesn't realize that Vitaly is, um, he doesn't realize that Vitaly knew the guy. And he ends up confessing to Vitaly that he had murdered. He's, oh, you're a broker? Yeah, yeah, I knew this mur- th- or this uh, this stockbroker. So they talk, they become friends, and the guy ends up confessing to Vitaly that he murdered. That Yeah, yeah, I fucking gave this guy to take the care of this guy. I gave him a shot. He says, the guy told him, um, uh, the guy told him that Vitaly, um, he told Vitaly that the guy owed V money and he had to take care of him with a hot shot. But V says that's not true. V says that the guy murdered him to steal the money. So it's a whole conv- convoluted it's thing. It's a whole mind fuck, really. Right. But, because I remember you were trying to call somebody to well, because, help him out. Because when Vitaly found out and realized all this, Vitaly was upset. He's like, I never told the police that. I never I said, well, it's not too late. You, This guy fucking murdered your best friend. You can, let's write the cop. We know the cop that, we know the police officer. We know who the, the homicide detective. Let's write him a letter. So we wrote him a letter from prison. The detective calls Vitaly. Vitaly told him everything on the phone. And uh, um, they launched an investigation. Matter of fact, it was in uh, the Atlantic magazine uh, that they talk all about it. In the Atlantic magazine, there was an article about me in the in the Atlantic and about the story, and specifically about uh, part of it was about Vitaly. So, go to uh, tab six, uh, Dan. Um, yeah. So now, right now, as far as with that, you have the synopsis done, and then you're going to turn that into a book. No, I don't think I don't know if I'll turn it into a book. I would turn it into a book if it became like a if it turned into something. Mm-hmm. I would ter- definitely turn it into a book. Okay, so if we scroll down here, scroll down, Dan. This is what comes up whenever you do uh, anything with uh, scroll down. Keep going down, down. Uh, the Atlantic is this right here, Matt? Is this the one? Con man who became true crime writer, The Atlantic. Yeah, that's it. Click on that. Okay, and then uh, scroll down. Okay, Matt, look up here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you'll get the name on here. So if you check out The Atlantic, it's uh, theatlantic.com. Uh, Matt's on there. All you got to do is type in Matt Cox, and you can see all that good stuff with that. So you're going to do that. You're going to do uh, Vitaly Synopsis, and then what are you going to do, pitch it? Rico was the guy's name. Rico. The mur- the, the yeah, guy I, that killed him? You're right. They're saying Rico. I remember. Yeah. I remember Rico. Yeah, how could I? My, my one of my very good friends bothered me, bro. Yeah, no, I, I know how it is. Yeah, Rico. <sighs> yeah, when when you get that on your mind, boy, I know you, Matt. I'm one yeah, of those Rico. Guys that wake up at two o'clock in the morning, like it was, you know. Yeah, it's like it was Shawshank the- Redemption. You know, I was like, that was the name of the movie. You know? Yeah, yeah, but uh, so you think you're going to do a synopsis and then pitch it? I already got a synopsis. I I would love to turn it into a sizzle reel. And then pitch it and try and get some kind of a documentary made on it and get it turned into something. Like, to me, it could be a series or a movie. The nice thing about it being a movie is it's one of the – some of the stories I have, there's so much material there. Like, they could go on and on. This particular one actually has, like, a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a a Wolf of Wall Street. This is very much a Wolf of Wall Street. There's a beginning. It's a three-part act. Okay, and to relate to what you just said, you know how The Sopranos had, what, six seasons? Right. Okay? And now there's a movie coming out October 1st. Right. So they did their series, kind of like what you said. Right. And But they're taking it, they're condensing a series that, like, it's difficult. To, something that spans 10 or 20 years is difficult to turn into a movie. Does that make sense? Like, it's better as a series. That's the kind of thing, because then you can run it for eight years, mm-hmm. especially if it's something that's true. So you have something that look, but this like if let's say Boziak, Boziak's story goes goes on for like m- ever. Forever. It's still going on, right? It is still, <laughs> it is still he's going in fucking on. South Dakota, right? Right? Now. Yeah, he's 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 something else. Like he he's so funny because like he, he, he literally he was about to go to China before, in COVID when COVID started. <laughs> you understand? He was he was going to go to China. I know. I so know. um, he's just super. But I mean, that's the kind of story that we could you could take this kid starting off. 
in his 20s and run it for 10 years. You could run the series forever because it's he's constantly doing different types or different frauds. But the one thing he's consistently doing is manufacturing credit cards. But, I mean, it's for everybody. It's for the Russian mob. It's for people in China. It's for people in Japan. It's for it's for Canadians. It's for people in all over all over the world. Yeah, like I said before, I, I think your 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 hits are uh, Vitaly. You know, I was waiting. I, I didn't realize he was that yet. But I always knew after reading that that Vitaly for sure and Boziak for sure. You know what would be – The problem with Amadeo, not that it's not a good book, but that, that only pertains to a certain type of people. Well, you know what? Kind you, of. You know what the good relation with Amadeo would be? Did you ever see House of Cards? Yes, I did. It could be a House of Cards series. style series. Yeah. Think yeah. about it. I want. You know what? I like, watched every one of them until they cut them off for whatever. Absolutely. The fuck they did. Oh yeah, they, that was it. Like those, they're idiots. Every single one. Like I wanted to get on the treadmill to watch it. You know what I mean? That was an amazing series. Amazing fucking series. And I liked the chick, but he was it. He was the show. He was the show. Once he, he she's no good without him. No, he was the shit. Yeah. Just his posture, his moves. I loved it when he would actually. Do you watch that, Dan? Bro, you gotta you. Yes, I love House of Cards. You, I love it when he turned to the camera and talks to you straight. Yeah, fucking great. Fucking, yeah, I'm honest to God. Like I, you know, you wake up, you don't want to get on the fucking treadmill. You know what I mean? Until the caffeine hits. When when I was into that, and you know, I, I think I was up to like series four. Uh, you know, it was getting really fucking yeah. good. You know, people were starting to disappear and shit. <laughs> you know, uh, the one guy. I, I don't even want to try to think of his name because I'm not going to remember because I haven't watched it. Who? But, uh, um, yeah, Spacey? Uh, no, no, no. Spacey, but his his partner that was starting to get sick of his shit. He had like a shaved head kind of. Oh, no. You, Kevin Spacey's the guy that plays. Um, I know. I'm talking about the other guy. Oh, you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was. He plays the um, the chief of staff. He plays his chief of staff, right? Then he plays chief of staff? He's the same guy that's in Billions. He plays uh, the counterpart. He's the bald guy in Billions. That's the best. Look it up. I haven't looked up. I haven't seen Billions. Go to um, the Google tab and just type in House of Cards. Cast. House of cast. Cards cast. You know yeah. what everybody keeps telling me to watch is, um, what is the show? Heist. Or no, is it Heist or something like that? It's on uh, Netflix. Is it? Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, I watched part of it. People keep, oh, you got to watch this. You got to watch H Hustler. What is it called? Is it called Heist? I think it's called Heist. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen part of it. You got to watch this. You got to watch this. I've seen part of it. I I don't know. Maybe you'll yeah. like it. I, I I don't think. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Michael plays, Kelly. He, no, Doug. Yeah, he plays a, a what? Doug Stamper. Yeah, so yeah. He plays Doug Stamper. Yeah. Okay. That, so, okay. So I'm talking about keep it right there then. Uh, look, so Michael Kelly. He those two together were killer with, I guess that Robin. I, I, wow. She Ro looks, Robin, looks different in there. Yeah. Ro listen, Robin. Right. Like she's gorgeous. Yeah. She's got to be in her what? Is she in her 40s or 50s? She's got to be in her f close to fifty, right? Yeah. See how old uh, Robin Wright is, or no? That's no. She, yeah, she played Claire Underwood. Claire how old Underwood. do you? While well, he looks that up, how old do you think she was? I'm gonna say fifty, but she's amazing. I'm gonna say she's got to be fifty. I'm gonna say fifty two. He's in his fifty. Which, say, which one uh, do you want to know? Robin, uh, no, no, Robin Wright. Upper Robin left. Wright. Robin Wright. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fifty two. And yeah, just right, there you go. Fifty-five years old. Fifty-five. Wow. Damn. Listen, she's smoking. She's even in that picture, and that is not her best picture. She's Bro, smoking that's, for that's, fucking. That's that is fifty thousand dollars in plastic surgery. That's got to be. I don't give a fuck. I, I mean, it worked. I don't care. And, if it's and plastic. I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad and look, thing. Look, she doesn't really. She doesn't look all like plasticed up. No, she's amazing looking. Yeah, but how about it? When when uh, Spacey left, that was it. It was over. It was over. It was I mean, over. What, what was the problem again? He was. I don't he know. Was he was trying to hit he, on some male. Like, the guy wasn't, like, underage or something, I don't think. It I think just, it's bullshit, personally. It was, they're, they're, but this day and age, they're just... Oh, yeah, if you just pretend. Like, you can just, just the allegation. Do you know what he got done. hit for? Yeah, well, initially they were saying it was underage boys, but it's been 100% proven that it wasn't. He just got destroyed in the media. Type in, uh, in Google, what did Kevin Spacey get, what would you say, uh, kicked off House of Cards for? I don't know. It was. I think it was. It killed the fucking show. You yeah. know what I mean. I'm shocked the show's still going. But yeah, but you know what? I I can see that related to uh, um, Amadeo. Move for move there, director Kevin Space for move for movie business decision. Sexual. They're they're just they're making it light. They're just calling it uh, 
sexual misconduct. So it's bullshit. They he probably did something they didn't want him to do, and you know that was that. You know whatever they killed the show. It's it's still oh, running. Amazing. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I know that this series. I don't know if it's still running, but I know they still have the series. On. Yeah. You can still watch the series on Hulu or uh, FX. Um, it's on. Like um, no, it's on. It's on Netflix. Is it Netflix? Yeah. What I say, FX. I mean, I yeah, yeah, FX. it's on Netflix because I, I see it pop up when I watch. Uh, here we go again. Black. Uh, what's the blacklist? Blacklist. That's blacklist. a bomb ass. Right. Yeah. That's a bomb ass series yeah, yeah. too. See, you know, some of these stories you, well, a lot of the stories you got are more series ish than movie ish, but you and Vitaly, I think, are movie ish. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's also got a beginning, a middle, and end. Yeah. So Vitaly's has a beginning, a middle, and end. And Boziak is just on and on and on. Could could go on forever. Um, Frank Amadeo could go on forever because you do understand that Frank's out. Mm -hmm. He's in Orlando. He got COVID relief, right? Yeah. He's in Orlando. He's basically putting together another company. Oh, my God. Oh, listen, it's not going to stop. God wants him to be emperor of the world. Okay, Tommy? So it's not stopping. So I know what you're thinking. Kick back on the couch, binge watch Netflix series, and just be happy you're out, Frank. No. No. Oh, I know he won't. I mean, I've never met him, but. He is. All in again. All in. (laughs) He is going to be emperor of the world. It is (laughs) preordained. You got to see this. You got to. You got to see this, Dan. You Pre-ordained. Got, you ordained. I'll, I'll text you the uh, the two links to our interviews about him. We did two. We did one on him, just like him personally, and then because there's so much shit that you just can't believe it, uh, we did one on all the documents yep. to back up what it's Matt says. So insane, you can't. You're like bullshit. What do you mean he tried to he tried to take over the Congo and he backed the play? The motherfucker what did you, too. I have all the articles. I have all the, I have everything. It's absolutely true. 32, uh, 32, this is just the guys they they arrested. The military arrested 32, (laughs) uh, um, 32 um, private security personnel from, from, listen to this, from, um, uh, from South Africa, which is huge in private security, you know, mercenaries. So they arrested 32 mercenaries who were planning to take over the Congo who worked for Frank Amadeo. And it's real. Like, it's we, real. On the document uh, video that we did, yeah. we had the pictures. He had some fucking, like, crazy helicopters. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a documentary on my channel There's a do- called Nine Days in the Congo because they, they hold them for nine days before Frank can get them taken off. He also was plotting a coup to invade uh, Tajikistan, he also was, um, oh, bro. I mean, he. I have pictures yeah, it, of him it, with it, President Bush. Yeah, he's but, meeting with President Bush, and I don't mean like a photo op. He didn't pay ten thousand dollars for a dinner. This is him sitting in the Roosevelt Room with NATO staff people, one man away from President Bush. Check I mean, out, check out uh, his true crime, and I, I have the book in there. Yeah. But I'm going to make you buy it. But I'll show you the picture in the book of no. him with Bush. I was actually in prison with him. He actually wrote my motion to get my uh, one of my cases dismissed. Did he? Nice. See? You know. <laughs> you know, Amadeo. <laughs> You're a believer. Are you not a believer? Amen, brother. I, I, what, what, what am I looking up here? Bro, I had two 2255s. It's good. You know, both my 2255s were filed by Amadeo. 12 years off my fucking sentence, Amadeo. Because they didn't want to give me a reduction... Amadeo filed two 2255s. He's amazing. I'm, I would vote for him for emperor. <laughs> I'm saying I need to, you know what I need to do? I need to make a screen print of Amadeo and have tw- Amadeo, uh, uh, Amadeo for emperor 2024. And send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell those on my channel. People love him. Yeah. Listen, you know, my book sells. My second highest selling book, which I never talk about, is it's insanity? Would they let you interview him, like uh, on your podcast? Um, you know, Danny from Concrete, yeah, has consistently he's spoken with him on the phone, like half a dozen times, and he keeps not like he's like, oh no 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 no, next week let me talk, let me find. He keeps pushing him off. And he, pushing, he, yeah, he don't want you know, to. Do it. He he, you know how he's very good at spinning you and spin. He's very good at Frank's a spinner. Mm-hmm. Frank say on Tuesday, and then Tuesday comes. It Tuesday becomes Thursday, and then Thursday becomes, and he's just kind of spinning. Yeah, but you could get him. He wrote his fucking book. He, yeah. but yeah, but Frank's a different. He's a whole different. Uh, I mean, you listen. Nobody has a hold of Frank Amadeo. Nobody yeah. can get Frank Amadeo to do anything that Frank Amadeo doesn't. Not even doesn't his want. wife. 
um, nobody. So what do you think the next book will be that you write? Um, if I can get some help, and I actually spoke to a woman today who's a writer, um, I want to write a story called The Company, which is about the these um, these a chi- the Chinese gang that in the late 80s, early 90s was robbing computer chip manufacturers. They were going in to computer chip manufacturers at night, and they were taking over the the plant and zip tying everybody and then stealing like a hundred thousand like chips putting them on loading up vans and then meeting people from manufacturing plants in china who were buying the chips so we've got chinese manufacturers buying computer chips that were stolen they're they're getting them to steal the chips then they're shipping them to Taiwan, to Hong Kong, to Beijing, where these companies are, and they're putting them into computer chips, into computers, and then shipping the sh- computers and selling them to the Americans. This went on for like two or three years. They robbed like 30 different companies. It was, and we're talking about $10 million in chips. And these guys are literally going in, getting the chips, sticking them on vans, meeting some Chinese undercover, some kind of Chinese underworld character who gives them a, a briefcase with like $2 million and they give them the keys to the van the guy drives off. I mean, it's like some espionage style shit. That's awesome. That's going to be... So, but the problem is I would have wanted to have written it over a year ago, but the most of the documentation is in archives and the archives in California where this is where he was. this guy was processed. Um, sorry, or, you know, it was they have jurisdiction over and it was... Um, so the archives were closed because of COVID. So we ended up, I have a buddy who's uh, ended up getting, knew somebody who knew somebody who knows a federal judge and the federal judge called down to the head of the archives and got them to go and look up all the material and send it to us. And I just got it about two, three weeks ago. Did he really? Is that, fuck, that alone is, you know, that's amazing. You, you, you know have some amazing. good luck. That is amazing. I mean, I, it wasn't even me. It was just a friend of a friend of a friend. I'm like, just I, saying that it just all came together. But yeah, it was a year. Like we kept thinking it was gonna it was gonna open. It's gonna open. It's gonna open. It never opened. Nothing's open in California. It's locked down. Like that whole thing. I'm surprised they're not star- starving to death by now. I know. I don't know what's gonna happen when somebody has to pay this bill. And they're still printing money, and they want to raise taxes and this is everything the else. Better view of me, by the way. Because mm-hmm. most of the other ones we did, I didn't look great. I look solid in this one. There I look. Go. I would say I. I'm. I'm gonna go. I look. In I look like I'm in my mid forties, and handsome as a motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I'm I bet, just. I bet she calls you back after this, just because of the camera. View. Are you? Ser- of course. I may send I'm, this. Well, I, pff, hey, hook hook a brother up, man. I just got your girl back for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a compliment. I'm not sure that's going to help me. That just gives me three more months. <laughs> yeah, then it's another roller yeah, no, coaster ride. Exactly. This is going to go on back and forth forever. I don't care if you go fuck somebody tonight or tomorrow or whatever. You're going to be back. By the time you're back in here again, you'll be back with her. Let's give them uh, some promo. Go to uh, tab two. Nobody's watched it this far. Yes, they have. They're watching you. Everybody loves you. Go there. And just uh, you know, slowly scroll through all his art that he does, because it's uh, it's definitely well worth it. So, did I tell you this? I met some chick. I met a chick, right? And then she said, "So, what do you do for a living?" I said, "Oh, I sell art." Oh, really? And I gave her my Instagram. We were supposed to meet at Starbucks. I gave her my Instagram. She goes to my Instagram. She came back. She texted me back. She said, "I think maybe we shouldn't meet." I said, well, why? She says, well, I don't know. I watched, went to your Instagram, and I watched a couple of the videos, and I just don't think we're a good fit. What the hell is that? What? 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 It's like you're buying a painting, right? I don't. There's I don't know what happened. What happened? Yeah, you got great stuff there, man. Yeah, yeah. You got to click on one that. Click on the baby uh, uh, in the middle, upper right, upper right, right. Click on that one. Yeah. You. What are you doing? Not that. No. Middle right. No, no. You you were on it. It says G R Y baby. Okay. That's a, that's a, this is this is one of my favorite paintings. Like people don't even not they don't not like it. I sold this to a guy named Robert Smith. Robert okay. Smith is insane. He texts me at three o'clock in the morning sometimes. 
I remember I, I think I texted you when you were doing this and you said, I'm, look, look what I'm doing. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh, it, I, because I, it was like halfway done. Nothing yeah. against what no, no. You, know, you did. It, or, and, and or, I've had guys yeah. like, oh, bro, like, what was weird, a baby? But I, I love this painting. This is a great painting. That's some talent. I mean, that's, look at that. Look, look at that. I, know. I think that's pretty cool. That tongue is really detailed, too. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. It is. It's funny. It's funny. X out of that. Just click away from it. Go down. Yeah, that's the problem with Instagram, like these pictures. Like that's half the thumbnails, yeah. you know, like the videos. You got to click on it to really see. Yeah. But, you you know, you can get the idea. That one's kind of cool there, too, with the, the kid with the blonde hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Click on that one. That is pretty cool. Like that. I already did. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, who'd you make that? Did you make that specifically for somebody? Yeah, just like, you know, the stuff that – that's the reason I don't like doing commissions mm -hmm. is because it's like I have to do what you want to do, which isn't what I want to do. And then I, you know, I, I'd rather just do what I want to do and then just sell it. Cause anything I stick on Instagram sells within with right away. I make a little video, I post it, boom, it's gone. It's sold. It's over. And you sell it through DM, right? Through, yeah. uh, you don't have like a demo on your website or anything like that. No, uh -huh. no, I just th through Instagram. I, I should, you know, probably I would like to do some kind of a website and I'd like to kind of mass produce some paintings and get them up, get them up there. And I may do that in the future, but right now I sell, so I don't have time to wait. Like what my stuff should be going for requires you to wait. Right. And I don't have time to, I'd rather sell something for a thousand dollars right now and pay my rent than sell it for 1800 or 2200 or $2,500, but have to wait three months. Well, I need a thousand dollars now. Yeah. So, and wow. I know that sucks, but I mean, it sucks, but that's, a, you know, two years out of prison, COVID, you know, that's the way it is. Now, you know, maybe if I went and got a regular job or something, I could wait, but I can't do that. If I was doing it, I'd, I would do like four limited editions and, and put them high and then screen print the motherfuckers. You'd sell the fuck out of them. You'd put them on eBay everywhere. They'd sell like crazy. These would sell like crazy. You just put them, like, don't tell me how much it costs because then it would fuck up your price, but you just put them on a screen print and put them on a fucking canvas. You'll sell these all day long on eBay, Amazon, whatever. I mean, really, yeah. all day long. Or even just a website that was, uh, you know, SEO'd correctly. I mean, you sell the fuck out of them. Go to uh, tab three. It says YouTube uh, art. You haven't done too much on there. On the YouTube uh, pop art. Pop art, yeah, yeah. But all, my, all my stuff is Cox pop art. Yeah, just scroll down just a little bit. You know, so if you want to see some of the stuff, there's Biggie and painting Biggie. Yeah. So uh, I do on all my stuff. I do like I do a three minute, and then I do like a ten minute. Yeah, keep scrolling. Yeah, well, that's yeah. not my actual channel. He he never clicked on the actual channel. Yeah, go back up and click on the channel. No, the, that's, so that's the face. Like, yeah. yeah. Then if you hit video, hit videos. Right. Yep. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. So just all right. so I I typically yeah. do like a one minute video and a ten minute video. That's cool. I, I like how you speed through it. How the fuck do you do that? How do you speed through that when you, um, you know, like when you're painting it, you make it the like, time go, lapse. Yeah. 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 I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. You click on the image and then you, you go to, you just basically speed it up. There's a, there's a way I can show you where the thing is. Okay. On. So uh, that, that YouTube is Cox pop art. It will be in the description and they, um, you know, yeah. buy them. It's good shit. And then go to his, uh, YouTube for Matthew Cox and inside true crime. Right. Yeah. And now you're doing interviews. When you were here last time, you weren't doing interviews yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, or maybe you had just started it. Yeah, I got uh, Col Colby. Uh, Colby uh, Baker is my, um, he does all my video editing. He's basically runs the channel for me now. Great. And that's why I'm like massively, we're just, how many videos do I have now? Go back up. Um, usually it tells you how many. You, yeah, it's, I, I know I've got like, I've got. Like, I see. I see you pumping them out. I I mean, so we're doing almost like a, a video every other day at this point. Like there's just a ton of videos. And then go to his uh, Instagram. And this is his uh, Inside True Crime Instagram. Uh, right there. What's the guy's name on the third? You were talking to him before we came on. What? The, Zach. Zach. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah Zach, he's Zach. one funny guy. Zach one is hilarious. Funny guy. There's my boy Michael Dowd. I love that guy. Yeah. Did he, you interview him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He is funny as hell. He's the funniest guy I've ever met in my life. Yeah, by far. He is super funny. There's Boziak. This is funny. Stuff. The guy that runs my channel. <laughs> <laughs> there the, I am. The guy that runs my channel must have just put all these up. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. There's Boziak's book, Bent. Keep going down. 
and then right there, click on that one right there with Matt and the polo. That down, is that value tainment or is yeah, that the commercial? Yeah, that's value tainment. Okay, X that out. I like them, but I, I I think there's an issue, like a copyright issue with that. Huh. Keep going down. Wow, he posted a lot for you. This wasn't here last time I looked. Boziak, yeah. He threw some paintings in there, yeah. concrete. Yeah, I wasn't. This is when then when I started it. I wasn't sure about, but everybody I talked to was like, "No, don't put your paintings on this. Like, separate your." True yeah, crime from that. the paintings. I didn't realize that. And there's shark in the housing pool. That yeah, that's value tainment too, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that who is that? Who's the boxer right there? Um, Floyd. Is that Flo no? Is that, wait, that, no, I, no, I almost no. said Floyd, but I was like, nah, he's too big. No. And what? Click on that. Oops. Who is that? Uh, WC heavyweight champ, unfinished. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know why that's up unfinished. Like, I didn't hmm. put that up unfinished. Okay. Just quick scroll down. Oh, there's, uh, what's his name? What the fuck is that guy's name? A oh. story of government corruption, murder, and one Oh, man. yeah. Oh, I was in prison with him, too. What, yeah, the, yeah. what the hell is his name? Uh, um, Caroni. Oh, Dennis God. Dennis Caroni. Jesus Christ. Caroni. What a lunatic, right? Did he get out of COVID relief? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, go over to the next tab. And that's the Atlantic, and just uh, click back, back. Just click the back button, like on Google, just to show people how popular this guy is. Okay, just scroll down quick. Now, Matt, what's uh, MatthewCoxArtist.com? I didn't see that before. Matthew, what, what is that? Matthew Cox Home Title Theft. Matthew, Co uh, click on that right there. Artist, give him a shout out. Oh, there's another Matt Cox. Oh, I, oh, geez. Well, that's good that we pointed that out. Yeah, okay. yeah, there's another. All right, uh, go back. Fuck him. Fuck you, Matthew yeah. Cox. You went for real. Um, you, you know, when the Secret Service actually went to a gallery showing for him, thinking it was me when I was on. The, well, it was the U.S. Marshals went when they were trying to track me. Matt Cox uh, well, emerges from. You got a defense from, reporter. <laughs> Matt, you got a nice spell just like your name. Yeah. Well, his is S. His is Matthew S. No, no. Sorry. There's also a, a writer, an art, an, a writer who spells his, his Matthew S. Cox. And I'm Matthew Beacock. Be Matthew Beacock. But yeah, I mean, you're you're all there's ten thousand pages of your shit on there. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff on me. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. So what's the next thing for you, Matt? I mean, what's you're it? gonna do Vitali, and hey, 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 no homo. Oh, okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Good joke. Good joke. Kind of dry, but. All right, let's wrap this fucker up. How many? How long has this been? We're two hours. Huh? You guys, two that's hours. a nice piece of. That's right. Like you know, you get a nice. That's gonna be a, a nice little a piece of scratch. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if. Well, look, I. What I, do you get? What's What's the, like I get about between twenty five to thirty eight, thirty nine percent people watch. So people watch about about thirty. I think the channel average is like thirty percent people watch my about thirty percent of the videos. So that's the, that's the great thing. That's why, like, to me, Colby will put up, like, these 30-minute clips, 40 minutes. And those are great. People watch about 30%. And then he'll put up, like, a two-hour video, and they'll watch, like, 30-some-odd percent of a two-hour. Like, that's a good chunk of watch. Well, they keep going back to it. Like, when I, like, for, like I'll watch Rogan on the treadmill when he's got somebody. Like, he just had that girl on that got uh, stuck in Italy. Right. Um, uh, I was just watching this morning. I can't remember. Stuck for... in Italy. Who, uh, who was the girl that got stuck in they they said she murdered somebody. Uh, oh, you're Knox, talking. Knox, you're, oh yeah, yeah. Knox. That's over. No, I know it's over. But I'm saying he just interviewed her on a show, and I was okay. interested in in what happened. And you know that's two hours, three hours. Yeah. And, and I watch like thirty hours at a clip. So like your two hour ones, they're watching them at a clip. You know, maybe thirty hours on the treadmill, and then tomorrow another thirty minutes. Not hours, minutes, 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 right. minutes. But the one you did with Zach. Shout out to Zach. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I it's highly funny. recommend anybody that's watching this watches that because that is funny. That makes me laugh, and it, it's tough for me to laugh with yours because I know you so well. He's funny, but he the story, he had me falling off. The, I almost fell off the fucking treadmill when I was watching. We him. did a we did a, a video about nicknames, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I everybody I talk to that watches my they, they, they keep they're like, bro, you know the funniest one you guys ever did the one about nicknames. They said, man, I was dying laughing. And what's his name, Zach? What? 
I mean, his nick he's just going by Zach. Zach, he's just, okay, understandable. Right. I get it. Uh, enough said. Right. So, yeah, definitely go to uh, Matt's. Just type in Matthew Cox, True, True, True Prime. Prime. Yeah. And he's right up there. It's the African-American, a little big, but he's funny as hell. Yeah, he is. That, that's probably the best one you have on there. Yeah. When yeah, you start good. doing interviews. So. Yeah. And we just did his entire story. Did like you? We're going to release it in cl- every day for like seven days, and then we're going to release the entire thing. It's like three hours long. Right, so you're gonna do like little p, like little clips, right. thirty minutes. Right, because that get, that gets a lot of generates a lot of traffic to your to your your um channel, and it gives you a chance that one of those blows up. Kind of like Vlad does, right? Right, and it, which you know obviously sucks because I get a lot of f- flack from it. But I get like for every guy that says, "Man, just drop the whole video." It's like first of all, you don't understand how it works, and secondly, for every guy that says that, there's another guy that says, "Bro, I like it when you do them in clips like that because I can watch the whole thing because you you have kind of a a break and then I can pick up the next day and like so some guys like it so you can't make everybody happy yeah there's multiple them. ways what, multiple and eventually ways we do put out the whole thing yeah I, I think with him that I, I think with that philosophy I think that would be based on the guest you know what I mean like with Zach he's so goddamn funny yeah you could break him up yeah. now like a Boziak in my opinion you would want to get all that uh, you want to like get you want to get that out of the way. You want to get it all because it's so it's so good. Like yeah, you could break it up, but you want to get it. You know, Dowd, you yeah, want to yeah. get all you can out of him. I mean, he Dowd is just so goddamn funny. Yeah, he is funny. So uh, that well, video got in on my channel. I think got like a hundred thousand views or something. Yeah, he he's awesome. He, yeah. He's really cool. Um, all right, so uh, thanks for coming in again. I'm sure you'll be in again shortly. Yeah. And uh, you know, best of luck to everything. And sorry about your girlfriend. I'm sure you'll be back with her by the time I see you again. I would I would bet him. Hurts every time you say it, bro. Why you got to keep talking? Why you got to talk about the practice? Because we've been through this they, five why, times. Why you got to bring it up? Why you got Okay, we've done probably six interviews together. Every other, It's every other one. One time you're with her, the next time you're not. Maybe I'll, be, maybe I'll be with one that actually likes me. Maybe I'll find a chick that actually likes me. Well, maybe, maybe awesome. she'll wake the fuck up. I mean, because at this point? Because you definitely were into her. Of course. No, I know. Listen, uh-huh. she's not going to find another guy like me. No, nope. that's I, the, that's that's for fucking damn yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, good or bad, we are good or bad. She ain't going to. find... She's most likely well, going to find some guy that it has that you know he dri- he 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 rides a, a a forklift and works in a in in some kind of a, a you know like a warehouse or something like that's like you know that guy he gets drunk every three months you got to bail him out of jail for a DUI you know that's who she's going to end up with and maybe after a couple of years she goes. Mm-mm. Man, I should have been with that dude, Cox. Like he's all right. He was all right. And Bob, Bobby Joe here. I have to keep bailing out of jail, and he just did six months in county. I mean, this is no good for me. Been down that road. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. And you guys to get back together quick. She might get with somebody else. She might. Yeah, okay. Some guy's going to bang. The first two months, yeah. sure. Wow, nine to five. Wow, he helps me. Uh, you know, change a tire. But fuck, this is boring. What? You know, I need some fucking crazy Matt in my life. Believe me, once they're with crazy they people like us. They all need some crazy, Matt. They yeah. really do. Yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, she's been with you for a while. So for her going with somebody else at first, it will be I great. I ruined it for him. Is there, you're saying I you, ruined you it for You ruined it for any guy. guy she dates. I like to think that. It's I true. Want, I, like, I like where your head's at. I, I'm with you on that. I, I'm not just talking shit. I'm telling you 1,000%. They say they hate this bullshit. They say they hate the chaos and the drama and this and that Plus, and blah, 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 and all you do is work. But listen to me. They go with another guy, and I'm telling you, no doubt about it, bored. Bored, and that phone will fucking ring. Plus, the sex was good, bro. And you, know, you, and you knocked I'm older, it. but I got them pills. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I all got right, them pills. All right. And you blew her back out, so it's there a dumb deal. There you go. Follow okay. that up. Follow that up. Fucker. So not only is she going to be bored... <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now think about it. Not only is she not going to be, not only is she going to be bored after a while because there's no excitement, right? Yeah. There's no crazy Matt bullshit going on. She's not going to get the dick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to be the same. I mean, so, I'm not saying I'm packing. I mean, let's face it. I know, <laughs> but I, I make up for it with enthusiasm. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Believe me, she'll be back. Well, all I, right. We'll see. With Thanks. that, we'll close it out and uh, I'll see you shortly. Wish all the best to you, of course. All right. See ya. Thank you, brother.